Hey, good evening. Welcome to the July 20th, 2023 Town of Berwick Planning Board meeting. I'd like to ask everyone rise from the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. An introduction of board members. To my left, I have Mr. Paul Amatucci, Mr. Jerry Grabill, Mr. Don Gennarelli, uh, Phil Roy, Vice Chair, filling in as Chair this evening, and our two newest board members, Mr. Les Bodwell and Mr. Rick Raines. Thank you, gentlemen, for uh, stepping up and fulfilling your civic duty in this very important role for our community. We're, we're pleased to have you as part of our team. <clears throat> so we will start this evening with the public hearing, and the first public hearing is preliminary, prelim, excuse me, preliminary plan, major subdivision, Worcester Road, R3217E, R2, Zone Provincial Equity. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Mr. Chair, Vice Chair. Um, yeah, uh, Mike Sudak, Atar Engineering, here on behalf of Providential Equity, Equity Development. Um, so this is the public hearing session, so I'm just going to do a brief overview, and we can take comment, and then once we get back into old business, I can go through the comments from the last time. Um, so we had a site walk beginning of last month, planning board meeting middle of last month. Um, so just a brief overview of what you're taking a look at. This is 77 acres out in the R2 zone. It's a dual frontage lot with both Worcester Road and Pleasant Drive. Um, our proposal is to develop a 14 lot subdivision, uh, single family dwellings, clustered lots exclusively off the Worcester Road frontage. Uh, all the lots are gonna be um, individual drilled wells, individual on-site septic, uh, serviced by a single road about 1,400 feet in length. Uh, collector street standards is what it's going to be designed to from the town. Besides that, um, we've done a wetland delineation, vernal pool study, high intensity soil survey, um, test pits blanketing the site. We have adequate on site utilities for each of the dwellings. A um, couple revisions that I'll go over once we get into old business, but besides that, I'd uh, be happy to take any questions. Thank you. Any questions from the board? Okay. Ms. Griffith, did you have something you wanted to say before the next the next item open? Well, um, well no let oh, the public, public comment, comment on okay. this and then after that. Understood. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. I know. This is Thank you, Mike. Confusing. Okay. Last second instructions. Welcome. All right. Floor is open for anybody with public comment related to this project. Okay. okay. Hello. I am Noah Cobb, 90 Worcester Road. I'm also the chair of the select board. I am this entire piece of property here. So my piece of property runs across the entire length of this development. Um, so I'm one of three people that I would say are most directly affected by this development. Um, Could you show me again? I, yeah. I miss it. Where are you? This is my property right here. So literally the entire length of the development. Got it. Like there, that's the end of my property, and that's where the development. Is. Okay. Thanks, Bill. Yeah. Um, I have no immediate objections to development. No environmental issues. I was sure somebody was going to buy the piece of property next to me at some point and put something there. Um, I was certainly hoping it'd be a bit smaller and not quite uh, as covering of my entire property, but it is what it is. Um, my biggest concerns, uh, most were addressed in the, uh, the site walk that the stream would need to be preserved and for, for the development's purposes needs to be rerouted. As long as that rerouting doesn't affect the stream's flow through my property, then 
have no problem with, with that. Um, the wood lines, um, I asked if they were going to be basically sheared down to their, to their line, and they said they were going to keep roughly 25 feet inward of that uh, from the line, which is good. The more, the better. Um, the only concern I have from a perspective of the town as from the select board position is that the uh, the road, which is a cul-de-sac, um, will not be maintained by the town. The town will not adopt it. It will be private. And some allotment in the deeds for these new properties will have to be made for the road maintenance, whether that be a homeowners association or a road association, because the town is not going to be maintaining these roads now or foreseeably in the future. Um, the biggest concern that um, I have is privacy. Uh, most of you were at the site walk. It's a big open field, which is what I bought eight years ago. It was a big open field on all sides, basically. Um, no neighbors around. That was a conscious choice on our part to maintain privacy. My wife has pretty severe anxiety. Uh, around people and pets and all sorts of things. So being separated from that is an important part of her comfort and lifestyle. Um, and the tree line is roughly about here. So our backyard is being divided into at least two properties. Um, so our backyard is going to become at least two people's backyards as well. Um, which is a grave concern to her because if there's people in her in their backyards, she's not going to be able to use her backyard. Um, so my biggest concern is the the privacy issue and making sure that we have ours and whoever gets these properties has theirs as well. So um, I strongly request that a fence be erected along that property line up to the wood line, um, a privacy fence, solid panel, um, just to secure the line and to maintain privacy for all parties involved. Um, from my understanding, a six foot fence can be put up without any engineering costs or anything like that. Beyond six feet would require engineering, and I'm not pushing for that. Six feet is perfectly fine to maintain, you know, privacy. It also uh, will make good neighbors of us all because we won't have to worry about where our lines are, where we're cutting to bushes, trees that may be put up. Uh, my garden is actually about five feet from the line currently, it just because it's in the back of a field. There's nothing else there. But if it's somebody else's backyard, I have to make some accommodation for them. Um, but I think a fence is the best way to handle that situation. I don't want to stop the development. I don't want to uh, impede the use of the property. I just want to maintain our current privacy level that we are accustomed to and we purchased our house for. Um, yeah. Any questions? So how how? How many feet would that be of fence? Uh, roughly from, uh, I mean, for the, the first property, the, the, the homestead property, I have no issue with that. That's way up front. Right. That's not going to affect our use of the property in any way, shape, or form. But the, the next three lots basically encompass our, this is our front yard. This is basically where our house is, and this is our backyard. So I would say if you exclude the first house and have a fence from there to the tree line, you're talking about roughly 400 feet. From my memory, that sounds about right. Yeah. yeah. The way that, way that my property is, is divided up, it's 10 acres front to back. And the first five acres are open field, and the last five acres are all of our woodland. So. Um, where the properties go against the trees, that's probably not going to affect us very much at all. But um, the rest of the open field would affect us dramatically in terms of our usage of the property. 
So would you take something other than uh, a six foot wooden fence, for instance, vegetation screen? It, that is not um, something that we're, we're overly interested in because a lot of the vegetation needs to be maintained. Um, and at that point, I don't know who's going to be maintaining it. Is it going to be the people that are living there? Is it going to be us? It's going to add leaves to the field, which luckily for now is not something that needs to be raked and blown on a regular basis. Um, and the, the fence doesn't have to be wood. It can be plastic. It's just looking for solid, you know, solid paneling so that we're not looking into their yard. They're not looking into our yard. Um, okay. There's already, there's probably already going to be some privacy issues because the, the homes they're building are two stories and they're going to be relatively aligned with ours, which is going to be new territory for us. But the usage of the yards is is the more important concern. Right. Thank you for your comment, sir. Thank you. Any other public comment for this project? Cindy Pollock, and we live at 280 Pine Hill Road. Could you, could you repeat it one time just for the microphone, ma'am? My name is Cindy Pollock, and we live at 280 Pine Hill Road. I am not sure exactly where we are about this new development because it's the first we've heard about it. Um, but our main concern is we got the letter for the stormwater application, and we don't want it affecting our property, obviously. Where does your property so, abut, ma'am, if you could show us? It's the first we've heard about it. Okay. Um, Are you familiar with the pre existing home right at the beginning? Oh, okay. Okay. They're right here. So we're going to protect all this. Okay. So, and that's our main concern. Any other public comment for this project? We'll go ahead and close the public comment for uh, Worcester Road. And Ms. Griffith, you had some comments to make before we open the next public comment? Yes. I want to let you guys know that, um, that there is going to be some people speaking about the land use ordinances and in particular the design criteria needs to be uh, voted on tonight so what I need to ask you guys is for any public comment that anybody makes in regards to land use ordinance changes because you guys have to vote whether or not if they don't go to select board tonight then that's not going to happen um, that you guys make notes of specifically what you want included so then well, you can excuse me what does it mean it's not going to happen well, it has to happen. <laughs> this has to go to the select board. The select board has to vote so it can make it onto the ballot. For next year? For November. Oh, for November, okay. So we have, you know, bear in mind, things can always be like, you know, we can revisit all of these design criteria type of things later on. Um, we do need to overhaul some of the land use ordinances, um, which is something James and I have been discussing. We've been discussing with Lee J and Hannah uh, and with Phil. Our, our attorney um, because there are some things that have been proposed that actually just currently conflict with the land use ordinance and we have to make some more adjustments but I need you guys to please be very specific in what you hear from the public that you want to include so that when it comes time to make a motion you can motion <coughs> to if you motion to send it to select board that you do it with amendments as stated but we have a specific list okay because we, some of this has to be, like our MS4 stuff has to go through. So um, just make good notes and call things out individually rather than um, basically accepting everything as one fell swoop. Okay? Thank you. Was that clear as mud? Absolutely. You know, you know I like to confuse you, get your brains all scrambled too. Okay, so we will open the public hearing on amendments to the land use ordinance, subdivision regulations, village overlay district design guidelines. Does 
Did you? Uh, hello, I'm Jeremy Caston. I'm uh, 310 Blackberry Hill Road. Did did um, did the board receive a package from James Bellissimo? Uh, they receive everything from Terry. Terry, did you include that with Terry? the? Very good. Yeah. Excellent. Well, so um, Irish, uh, because uh, the way that was just explained um, is a little bit different than what James had had led me to believe leading up to this. Um, maybe I'll try to step back, set the table for this a, a little bit. Um, I put together a document uh, regarding specifically uh, convenience stores and gas stations based on conversations that we've had going back, you know, I don't know, four or five months now. And, uh, and that led to a conversation about the overall um, design standards uh, as we move potentially design standards that applies to the downtown overlay district to our, our essentially interstates, right? Route 9, Route 4, Route 236. I think about those as gateways into Berwick um, and in need of some thought about what those designs should be so that anything doesn't go. Uh, Mr. Roy and uh, Mr. LaRue and uh, James and I met uh, we had a conversation about going through a bunch of other towns um, uh, design standards for uh, downtowns and, and such and uh, he produced several documents. I think a lot of it came uh, through SMPDC uh, and we discussed going through those and pulling uh, notions from other towns that seemed like they would be applicable to what we're trying to accomplish. Uh, I did that, uh, I passed that document back to James, and uh, when we talked about that yesterday, I did not know that I should have that document and read it start to finish, beat by beat, well, and we can decide on it tonight. I don't have that a copy of that, so if somebody wants to make that available, I'm happy to read it. Um, Jeremy, we, yes. for starters, uh, public hearing, you're only allowed three to five minutes, so you wouldn't be able to read the whole thing, I but you, you just can't take... They have to vote on it tonight. They have to vote on it tonight, one. but for public comments per planning <laughs> board procedure, and we've, we've had it posted up the last several months on that the public comment is three to five minutes. They can give you an additional three to five, but they... We, we can't be here for 12 hours reading, but not, not I know that's an, that that's, an, that's, an, that's an exaggeration, obviously, but um, some of the things, I, I think you're probably hoping they would adopt this, this as a one and done, but they literally would not be able to because you are probably not aware, but some of the things that you have included in this go directly against our land use ordinance or are conflicting with our land use that's ordinance. That's why you're paid so to do that job that's, and I'm just trying yeah, to support it that's, But volunteer. that's why we want to include that whatever changes are in here that they may want, but I need them to be specific so that we can pick out the pieces they definitely want because we Have can't do it. Have you gentlemen had a chance to read through that carefully and make uh, thoughts and notes about that as it relates so I, to these changes? So I would like to go on the record and just say I, I know we had discussed this in the meeting that we had with Mr. Kasten previously uh, with our town manager and uh, I, I knew there was a sense of urgency but in, in my opinion and I'm offering an opinion this is a very crude document that is not in, in my opinion polished and ready for prime time and I think and, and maybe it's a discussion for another time, but do we put forth a weak document that doesn't necessarily serve the best interest of our townspeople in the order to rush it to a are vote? You, are you referring to this design? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma um, as I'm going through it, it is, in, in my opinion, it is, is a bit crude. And I'm I, I sure just there's a lot of change that can be made, and I'm okay. sure that a lot of Jeremy's recommendations are... Um, definitely things that we should incorporate. I do want to remind you guys, the ball doesn't stop here. I want, I want all of you, the board and you, Jeremy, to be aware. What the recommendation the board needs to make is for it to go to select board. There will still be changes at the staff level. I mean, even if, even if you guys wanted to just run through it real quick, pick out the things you think you want, 
or if you want to somehow I, I uh, state you want to incorporate it. I mean, I, I can give it to them. I'm five minutes. I'm really okay. familiar with this guy. I don't if want they're to speak for to, everyone. If they're I, I willing to let you, if you're willing to let him read through it, I'll give him a copy of this. And that that's fine. But I yep. don't, in my humble opinion, our our job is to provide quality products for the select board, so that it's easily digestible. Uh, they can make their recommendations. In my opinion, and maybe other people I don't feel think, different. I agree. I do not think yeah. this document is ready for prime time, and rushing it to a vote. I think is the wrong answer for our town. And and I understand that. And while I wholeheartedly agree everything should be fully reviewed, um, just so the board is aware, if this does not get voted on tonight to go to the select board, then this will be left off the November ballot entirely because we have reached the And what is the, the what is the negative repercussion of us doing that? We wait another year and you wait another year for town, yeah. more I, people standing up in, here weeping in, about what's happening and, right and now. Have, anybody and have. Doing but then we have a quality product. If yeah, we're rushing so this through for the sake of rushing it through, we're I not we're not doing our due diligence as a board. And I, I think the push for it being rushed through with absolute full respect to all parties involved has been the uh, uh, I think it has been more of an attempt to appease the people that have been coming up and making the statements and the concerns, voicing the concerns and the complaints to at least give them some sense of at least we have something in place that we can tweak for next year because we can always revisit this. But if you guys are comfortable with it not going through um, at all for this year, then that's fine. It's a, I guess it's a matter for the board to determine what balance you want to strike with the voters. So I, I think, go ahead, sir. Yeah, I, I just feel that uh, I agree with you that uh, I want our product to be exactly what feedback from the community tells us they want melded with what the realities of moving forward <laughs> with uh, with the design uh, document. So, uh, and, and the truth is, this is the first time I've seen this. I haven't seen this. So, uh, I'm supposed to decide within the next half hour or 45 minutes whether this is good, bad, or a piece of trash. So, I'm not willing to do that. Uh, tonight, uh, and I think that you know the rush to get it on the ballot. There, there's always another ballot, and uh, and I think let's have some time with this. There's a lot of voices about this, and I think that every voice should be heard, and I think that every concern has to be addressed. And it's not just the design. It's other issues. There are environmental issues. There are road issues. There's uh, frontage issues. There's lighting issues. There's so many other issues involved in these types of things. And I, I'm just not prepared to say, hey, let's rubber stamp it tonight. I, I agree with you. I think, I think our staff work is a, is a reflection of our efforts. And if we are producing less than what I perceive to be quality staff work, it's a reflection on us as a board and us as a town that is managing the affairs of the town for the town's people. Um, I, I would offer that if we aren't able to get this before a vote, we as the board still have the ability to condition projects as they come before the board. Um, I've and been we, saying that right along, yeah, but okay. this is something that the public has pushed for, so we've Absolutely. tried to appease. But if that we, being said. If we push through a less than stellar document, we're, we're really kicking the can down the road, and we're, we're not doing our due diligence, and we're not doing quality staff work. That, that's that my being opinion. said, I want to clarify for you guys that regardless of how you feel about the individual pieces, and you guys can make a motion for each individual piece, if the MS4 does not go to select board so it can get on the budget, then we are in violation of our permit with the MS4. That's the LUO stuff that Christy Rabaska was giving us all the confusing stuff that you took all my input on applying it town-wide, that kind of thing. I don't think anybody here is going to speak to any of that, but that we do have to be compliant with the state with our MS4 permit. Can but we, that can, can be we done do different through, than this. Can we do that through conditions until we have a quality product? Are we able, that, is that within our power? That part program? you guys had already approved. Okay. That part is that part was tended to months ago. Okay. Um, you guys approved that. She, I don't, let me refresh the board's memory that Christy had presented 
we had had right. some discussion. There were some things that you guys kicked off of me, some questions I asked, some questions you asked. She made the changes, came back and presented those changes, and you guys accepted that part, but you never voted to put it to the select board. So we need to get that part done because that's MS4. We don't have a, we don't have a say in that. And all that language, if you mm -hmm. recall, was just what the state was saying we had to do except for the parts that the board voted to make stricter, which she included. So that part is So can we concern. break out it are it, You can is, break everything out. Can we pieces. break out the MS4 and send that to vote so we are in compliance because we've gotten our input from SMPDC which has brought us up to compliance in those specific areas. But with regard to um, our design guide standards, I, I feel I'm going to go on the record and say we as a board have not done our homework and I and we need to produce quality work for the people of our town. Um, so I'm going to be a I'm going to be a no vote on, on that. Um, just as long as everybody is fully aware going into this vote that by saying no that this will not be on the November ballot. If you guys are as long, I just want to make sure we're 100 percent clear. This will not be on the November ballot if um, you guys do not. Am I still within my moment to speak? Yes, please, Jeremy. <laughs> Sorry, Thank please. You oh, you, yes, sir. wait, you're still here. Uh, we no. stopped your yeah. stopwatch. <laughs> I, I appreciate that. I just want to sort of reset the table and bring us up to speed. And I understand your position absolutely. I would never want anybody to put out uh, um, anything that's sloppy. And I certainly understand receiving a package and not having an opportunity to read through it. I wouldn't put that through either. That being said, what brought us here was these, these multiple voices that, that you refer to, Mr. Uh tend to have been Papa Bear and myself here for the last five months speaking to these issues. And uh, there, were calls. there were calls, too. You guys weren't alone. That's why I said multiple voices. <laughs> Understood. Well, and, and, and to that, I, I, I want to remind us that um, there are concerns in, in the town about a lack of preparedness for what is not just coming but arriving and that you know i haven't seen i watch every one of your meetings i haven't seen anybody getting up here and saying what we need to do is make sure we do nothing and you guys meet you know on these thursdays and as far as we know the public we're not aware of other opportunities other than the one time that we sat down and said, this is the plan, put this together, get it here by the 20th, and, and that's how we're moving forward. With the town manager, I don't know where the disconnect was from... Well, we did have a holiday in between, too, which I think James skewed, out of town it skewed some, understood. Yeah, some timelines. Yeah. But, that said, that was a plan that had been put in motion from the moment that we said, okay, we're not going to change the land use ordinance, let's look at design standards as a way of protecting our town. So it may be that putting out a product that then goes to the select board to be point by point decided on is not in your best interest because it looks sloppy and I understand that, but doing nothing is certainly more concerning than that, especially with less of an opportunity than, than these four minutes for the public to interact with you about these concerns and nothing in there is you know none of it's made from whole cloth it's all from neighboring towns design standards it's good it's taking design standards that we don't have for routes 4 9 and 236 and saying we're applying our downtown design standards to those additionally these would be some good considerations they're pretty simple none of it's super complicated you know set back all the a lot of these have very complicated tables these are like you should have pathways garbage should be screened with trees like you can't have advertisements you can't have you can't have a gas station where you pull up and the pump starts talking to you and it's playing an ad if you skim them you'll see that it's we're not trying to push a bunch of crazy stuff through we're just saying Buildings shouldn't be made of garbage. They should be made, you know, signage shouldn't be the whole building. You shouldn't have a big flat wall. You should have a window in it. It's simple. And again, waiting <clears throat> from November to a whole other six months for another vote means that something else will happen, that more people, and I watch all of your meetings, it's just one tearful moment after another at this point. It would be good rather than stasis to make a decision to move something forward in my opinion. And I would appreciate, as a member of the public that's here a lot, th that sense that things can be actionable. 
that we don't just go, eh, this isn't perfect, and so we're going to not do anything. And again, this was the plan. We followed through with a plan. And then I'm arriving here to learn, oh, well, each of these should be individually decided upon in four minutes for a document that's borrowing from neighboring towns that, you know, that, that you guys saw what those were because they came from, from, from SMPDC and the town manager. So that, that's how this was built. If you would like him to go over them, I'll Let give me you say this. something. At the last meeting, you were here. Uh, Lee J was on the screen. We went through some of this stuff. Who was on the screen? Oh, I'm sorry. Lee J. Lee J. Lee J. Yeah. Okay. We went through this and we gave him input. None of that's None reflected of the in, in here. here. I sent a memo. None of it's in here. And okay. it, they were. They said at that time we would sit down and discuss this. We've had no time to discuss this. So I'm voting no because so, it's so not being adhered to and I'm not pushing something through that I don't believe in or haven't had time to discuss with everybody. I appreciate that information. As you as you stated, I wasn't here, and I'll be honest, I, I was out for the better part of 10 days sick, and I was trying to, no. I've been trying to catch up, so I have not watched that meeting yet. So, and I, know, I, I know, that packet, and, and I, I and mean, I in your defense, I remember and all. that meeting and those notes. Mm -hmm. What can we do short of blowing up the world for another six months and saying, well, our hands are tied? Is there any other action well, that can be taken? I think our hands our hands aren't tied, and I, and well, with, I, I with would another like another timeline. This is what happened last time. Is we're like, right. well, timeline. my hands are tied by a timeline. Here we are again. I've done all this legwork, poured myself into this, and we're being told, well, that you got to decide tonight. It's like, that, why is this always set up for the public not to actually get cor to correct? That's my in that's my frustration, that's and I share that frustration with you. And I would and I would ask our our chairperson if you, if you don't mind mr. Cobb I mean if we produce a less than and, and I'm not I'm not trying to crap on anybody's staff work but if we if we produce staff work that is less than stellar for you guys we're creating more work for you are we not yeah but it's not it's not dramatically more work it's not something that we're gonna we're gonna look down on you guys for or you know the when we get land use ordinance changes before they go to the actual ballot, they we go through them. They get edited, they get edited again, and you know it, it's it's not it's not finality. What you produce is uh, basically a recommendation to us. Then we tear it apart again, and then we rec you know pass it on to the voters. The voters say whether they want it or not. The um, and with all but, due respect, I should have clarified that too, Noah, yeah. and I appreciate the, you. The, I mean, the reality is that if, if you passed us, you know, recommendations that just said, you know, more trees, we, we would we would clear that up so that it was actually what it's was, what what the intent was supposed to be. Mm -hmm. You know, even though that's not what you guys recommended to us. Um, I'd also add, um, on top of the editing that we would do to whatever you produced. Um, uh, I mean, there's, I, I think there's, a, you know, options to have a January vote in, ex in extraordinary circumstances if we really wanted to. Um, the only concern with a January vote is no, next to nobody shows up for them, and the people that show up to them tend to vote no on everything. Um, so that, that does occur. But it is a possibility that if, we, if you really want to push it and you're able to get the town clerk on board, that's something that is, you know, well, I would, I would offer possible. The, I would offer this, Noah. What if, and, and Mr. Grable just came yeah. up with a, a brilliant idea, um, let's, put, let's hold ourselves to task, the two boards, let's sit down and, and let's conference this out between the two boards. That way we're streamlining the process and we're, we're producing a quality product to go before the voters instead of us putting forth I, I would be less than excited to put my name to this document mm -hmm. and, and, and saying that we should vote for this and send it forward because we have not done our homework, in my if opinion. May, Please. Also, the fact that there were notes made with our town and they're not in here. Not they're not in, in this document that I haven't seen right. is deeply concerning mm -hmm. and should absolutely be fixed before it goes to a vote in November, is there a way, I think this idea is amazing. Could we get a date on a calendar <laughs> to commit to us meeting with the select board to hash this out that would allow us to make some type of a quality product to put before the voters before the, the vote? Um, can I ask a question, we please? Can, please. 
I just, I just like to ask, what is the imperative rush to get this on the November ballot versus the springtime ballot? I can, I can speak to that. <clears throat> nice to meet you, Mr. Bob. Thank you. Nice to meet you, too. James has recommended we meet at some point. Um, I think everybody is aware that we live at a time where we, in Berwick, Maine, have enormous pressure which is why you always have people up here in tears talking about development. And that pressure is changing things fast. And I've spoken before the board multiple times about this, and I think that I am somewhat uh, at an advantage because I am from away, and I've lived in multiple places where I've seen quasi-rural areas and, and um, lovely, unique country farms become Walmarts very quickly. And that pressure is not lessening, it's, it's gaining. And it is gaining quickly. And knowing that we have nothing in place means that we haven't set ourselves up for a future. And that future is now, and it's happening. So we, we hope by being citizens here in front of the planning board, for, you know, meeting after meeting after meeting, speaking to these issues that, you know, it's been a year that we've been talking about how can we make these improvements and how can we think about these things in a way that then puts it back in the voters' hands. Well, this is it. I agree that this is not how it should have gone down. Certainly it deserves m better monitoring, but if there's a way, I, I think your your solution is fantastic and, and is exactly how democracy is supposed to work. You are able to put both boards together. Can we get on the calendar program. and make that happen? We'll have to work with Patty for that. Okay. Um, and if I may, a, a more direct answer to your question is the previous administrative assistant for planning and code uh, made it very publicly aware that there was a fuel station that is being proposed. We have not received an Can application. You say what? A fuel station being proposed station. that we have not received an application for. And ever since that moment, there has been this momentous snowball to create design standards and regulations, which understandably we do need to have, but that is the precipitous for that oh, well, whole see. situation. I'm so sorry. Um, so that's, what, speak, that's what has, has brought this about, and that's that, that was my That was my suspicion. That's exactly and, and so it. And my, my question about that is because I'm with you 100%. Everything you said... I agree 100%. I, I love the idea of having these standards in place. I don't love the idea of rushing these standards through. Mm -hmm. And that's why I was asking what is the time-sensitive nature of why do we have to do this tonight yes, versus right. reviewing oh, that. So, and so let me just yes, finish my point because I believe that if that application goes in before the vote goes in, these will not apply to that uh, project anyways. Yes. And so that's all, why I was like, what is the pressure to do this? tonight versus you know because one of the i'll tell you one of my goals of being on the planning board is to help with these issues yep. of making amendments to the land use ordinance and simplifying you know irish and i were talking about some of the areas that we think that there should be a simplified process um so i i'm, I'm with you 100 percent. I, I agree that these should be in i'm also concerned i have not even i mean i received these at 625 so i i I'm reluctant to rush them through as well, and again, if there's a if there's a, a fuel station, you know, being proposed, if that application goes in before the vote, these aren't going to apply to it anyways. Of course. So that reiterates my question of, should we be rushing these through haphazardly? So full versus disclosure. Versus getting them on the next vote. I have full disclosure, one statement, and then I have one suggestion, and then I'm going to shut up and let you all duke it out because we've been here for over half an hour and we haven't made it past public hearing. So full disclosure, the gentleman who purchased the parcel in question has come in, and I would anticipate because he has been dealing with his application, by the way, surprise, Hannah, because he's been dealing with his state fuel application, um, and I already have been reading through four different chapters from all of my contacts at the state. Uh, we will probably receive that application before the November vote anyway. So, so that kind of takes some of the steam <laughs> off it. But but the that other thing, point. here's my suggestion, and I don't know, Hannah, procedure-wise, Phil, mm -hmm. how the board will feel about this. Why don't we 
is there a way that we could potentially say, okay, you know what, the board, the board advises or the board motions to um, put these forward as a tentative initial criteria with the intent to meet with the select board to do a joint. No, no I'm not comfortable no. okay. with that at all. I would, I would just like to go on the record and say, uh, you know, I, I feel like the gentleman at this table and, and past board members, we, we do a lot of homework. We're, mm -hmm. we're, we're unpaid volunteers, but we do our homework. And I think we put appropriate conditions to maintain our small town charm. And I think we do that in, in the best interest of the public. And I hope that is transparent to the public. Um, my, my gut feeling and my heart as somebody who loves this town and is gonna live and die in this town, this is not a quality document that reflects my uh, contributions to, to this process. And I just don't feel comfortable putting it forth. Um, I would ask that the townspeople, if, if that is a source of frustration, please understand that we as a board still have the ability to condition projects in such a manner that they will meet a unique design criteria that fits with our town plan with our eye on the prize of putting forth a quality document that holds future applicants feet to the fire with regard to what we think right looks like. And I really think that's the right way ahead for our town. And if we if we miss the mark on this because we rush it through, then shame on us. So I am I am going to be a no vote, and I would be willing to take a roll call vote on this at this time if it's appropriate. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Sorry. Pat Pat Oberg, six point three million I guess, are you voting strictly on the design standards? Because I have some suggestions for changes to the actual definitions and things like that. So I don't want you to vote no on the whole gas station <laughs> thing. If you're voting strictly on those design standards, that's one thing, but I have things that I would like to bring forth that would probably be fairly easy changes. We would love and to. perhaps the change, perhaps these things can go forward and the design standards can wait. We'd love to see copies of that too. Oh, I have them. <laughs> I'm sorry to say they're in my kind yes, of great right. um work. At, uh, when I explain it, I think it'll all be good. I am like you. I don't have a lot of time to be doing this. <laughs> Thank you. Mr. Vice Chair, I'd just like yes, to advise whatever vote that the board decides to make, don't make any votes until we get to the actual agenda item for okay. this. Wait and Absolutely. close the public hearing, then do all the votes later. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. We've been in the public hearing for oh, ever. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so. What I am addressing is, um, and I don't know if it's changed because I honestly did not go online to see if this has changed, this thing that was proposed by Lee Day originally. It was slightly changed, but not to what we discussed, mm -hmm. and then there were supposed to be discussions on that. Okay, so um, I'd like to just uh, do some addressing of, of that actual <laughs> sheet um so do you all have that sheet yes because i'd like to start at the top of it okay <laughs> I'm sure you can share. It's not like it's <laughs> okay. Are you ready? Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right. So, um, the first thing um, is the new definition that is not in there because this was, remember, there was an omission. That's what all this was about six months ago. Um, okay, so you came up with a, someone came up with um, a definition. First of all, 
I always get too nervous, and I never said thank you for all the work everybody did on this. So thank you for all the work and that you've already done. Um, so the automotive convenience store definition. Um, I think the definition is fine, but when I got thinking about it, I don't. It does not take into account a standalone um, gas station like in North Berwick. So I think it's very important to change the definition to say something. I mean, you guys do it, but um, de uh, automotive convenience store slash gas station or standalone gas station or whatever you want to do. But, but you don't want to have an emission for a standalone gas station um, because if you, if you come in, I, I pretended I was coming in with a standalone gas station going through these, they don't apply, not all of them. So I think it's very important to make sure we add that type of gas station also. Yes. How would you feel if that was, if standalone fuel station was, if, if was separate, a separate yeah. second definition? Because the convenience station has the retail portion, would you be okay if they added a second definition that just said standalone fuel stations and then had everything that applies to the gas stations apply to those fuel stations? Possibly, but we can't omit no, standalone gas stations. I'm, at, I'm just have. asking yeah, instead I don't, of together, I don't know. You guys <laughs> separate, something along those lines. You guys have to figure that out, but all I know is that we haven't covered. The big thing with this is covering gas Everything. in our town. Yeah. <laughs> and we aren't doing it by this definition. So that's, that's one thing. So this, the second thing I'm feeling is when you go down to the little table um, for commercial and you have automotive convenience store, um, then you also need to have, if you're going to do a separate one, you then also you need to have there. that separate one. But to me, they all follow the same place of where they should be. And I included in your, <laughs> in your packet that I gave you a map of nine, Route 9, 236, and 4. And so what I would like to say to that is that to me, um, if you if you take Route Four, all of Route Four is in RCI, and RCI on the table has a uh, condition with a star. Okay, so to me that's that's appropriate. So what I'm asking you to do is to think critically of each one of these roads. Um, if you think of Route Two Thirty Six. You have an RCI section by the dump and, or the transfer station and that kind of thing. And so again, that would fall under the conditional star. And then the rest of it, I believe, is R2. If you think of Route 236 and the way um, the land is very much um, open land, farmland, that kind of thing, and Route 236 is very high and below where everything flows is the Salmon Falls River. Please do not allow a gas station on Route 236. That's my opinion of that. Now if you go to Route 9, it's a little more complicated, but um, Route 9, um, R1, um, we have on the chart, allows conditional with a star. That would include um, up to the um, intersection where uh, Freddie Farwell's gas station used to be. Okay, so to me, um, that can be a condition and, a, and includes everything downtown. That would be a condition with a star, like it says on the map. R2, I believe, should not be allowed. Um, if you look on your map, you can see where R2 is there. And then R3, um, I think R2 includes, whatever, well, let me keep going. 
And then R3, I think it might be a little questionable. Um, it's the area, uh, I think it should not be. It's the area between the Cranberry Meadow Swamp, so it would include the swamp area, and the Beaver Dam Swamp area. To me, it's again water. No gas should be in those swampy water areas. And think of think of the area, the Beaver Dam area, the, the campground, the Hackmatack Playhouse, a gas station. You know, we got to think for the future how we want our town to look. Do we want a gas station there? I don't think so. You guys can decide. Um, there is a little spot between the Knowlton School and the Guinea Road. I mean, that has um, one of the marijuana places. I think it has um, storage areas, stuff like that. If you, def if you desperately want a gas station on Route 9, to me, that would be the place to do it. But I, my husband told me that that would be spot zoning and that that doesn't stand up in court. No, so to me, um, it looks to me like R1 should be C with a star, R2 should be an X, R3 should be an X. And then I wasn't sure what some of these were. I saw there was another C with a star under LR, which I think is limited residential, and that's in shoreline zoning. Why would you put gas in shoreline zoning? To me, that should be an X also. So those are things easily fixed if you agree whatever you need to talk about. Ms. Bovair, I, yeah. I don't want to cut you short. No. But we do have timelines and we have a full agenda. But I, I do want to say, based on the fact that <coughs> you, you're providing us with things that we should already have and, and it should have already been considered, which is why we need to take our time and do our due diligence with this document. But furthermore, we, we have met on this. The board has made recommendations to this document that don't appear in this document. Um, and, and that is problematic. I, I know we record our meetings, um, so maybe this is not the most recent draft, but we, we have made changes to this document that don't That's appear good. in it, and, and that to me is problematic. So I know all of our meetings are recorded. Um, I, I think we're, we just collectively are not producing quality staff work, which is why I, I am reluctant to put this forth to the voters. I just don't think it's ready for right. I have one more thing that I just, yeah, yes, is this okay? Un yes, under J, you just have convenience stores. It should also, again, say automotive convenience store. It should not just say convenience store. So just And that would be cleaned up and some of the yeah. housekeeping. Okay. That'll be done. All right. It will be okay, well, I, I thank you very much. Thank you, ma'am, for your um, time and, and, and for your work. Your work. <laughs> And I also want you to know that it is very frustrating as a resident to think you're doing what you're supposed to do and, being, and doing what you're told you're supposed to do, and you don't get the results that you are told you will get. We were hoping to get in the uh, time slot before. This was a, not a guarantee, but all of this was supposed to be done in this six months, and it's not. So someone, somewhere, is not performing or doing what needs to be done. And part of it can be us as volunteer, you know, just citizens. But then we need to be told what it is that we need to do and do it. And I also want to just say that I think it's great. We talked about this before, that um, having these things in place, even if they don't pass, like Les was saying, even if they don't pass, what's the rush? you can say, this is what we're going to be doing. This is what we would like to hold you to. This is what, you can't hold them maybe to everything, but you can certainly show them what's in the works and that this is what you're striving for. So. Thank you very much, ma'am. Thank you. Thank Appreciate you. your Sorry, time. Uh, no? May I just have 30 more seconds because I just got cut off and I didn't get to finish my thought and I wanted to respond on the record to what, what we had said. I promise <laughs> 30 seconds. Thank you. I know it's a full agenda. I just want to address what, what seems to be a, 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 something that's been repeated several times, Ben, which is this sense that there's no urgency because perhaps this one gas station is going to happen before a November vote. I want to be very clear, this gas station is not the issue. There's not, we're not in River City with a pool table 
We're talking about an, an incredible amount of pressure in a rural town that has been the same, essentially, in many ways, since before the Revolutionary War. And now it's going to be the suburbs. And once there are Jiffy Lubes and, and, and Dunkin' Donuts, you can't reverse that. And to be very clear, I do not think anybody in this room or in this town believes that this one gas station, if it happens before the vote, well, then we, what's the rush? The rush is, it's changing. And if we keep not doing things because we're waiting to react, and every time the citizens show up and ask for changes and ask for reactions, nothing happens, <laughs> at some point, people will get very, very frustrated with this, this system. And we need and to hold ourselves accountable to a timeline. And I, and I will concede to you that we have failed to do that and, and we will pledge to do better but I, I and I think there's members of the board that, that agree with me we, we can't put forth a less than quality product it just what are we doing here if we're just going to put out paper for the sake of putting out paper that well, it's not paper it's actually ideas it, that have ideas, are backed up by all the be, towns around us it, that have done a very very good job of what we have failed to do is there any way you can have an executive session to to go through any of this well, to that's make what these we're decisions asking for with the select board, and I think that's going to be our, our best chance. With a way I, that I would hope that program. for all the people that that we interact with outside of this room, who say I am very very worried. Can we embrace technology and look at a calendar? We have the chair. Well, the of problem the, is we, we have the chair, but we do not have their administrative <laughs> assistant who holds okay. onto their schedule. So what we'll have to do is we will have to embrace technology and okay. um, do it via email once I can pick some dates okay. with Patty. Um, if I could set it myself, absolutely, I would. I would. Up and, and I'm, and I'm not intending to hinder the process. I, yeah, I, no, I hope no. I'm not coming across as that. If anything, I want to make sure we're doing our due diligence for the And I'm not and trying to come off like as pushy not. because I completely understand the board. And again, I apologize for not watching that last meeting in preparation of this one. Um, I just want to make sure that whatever we can get on the ballot that benefits the, the voters gets on there. Whatever you guys can't, we can't. But I just wanted to make sure I didn't know that there was it's another worth document. It's putting in the sweat equity. I'm willing to do it. Let's well, do I it. wasn't. I wasn't aware that there was another document that was supposed to have been prepared again because I did not watch that, and I don't know what the deal is with that. And I will follow up for the board and for everybody to to be aware of what's going on there. Um, that having been said, I just I assumed that this was the most recent updated copy that you guys were aware that this was all happening. And I wanted to make sure that if you guys chose, you know, all but lines four out of page one of what Jeremy had proposed, that that you guys knew that specifically and could tell me that. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Um, I wasn't trying to incite a riot. And Jeremy, no. I know this isn't the only um, that fuel, one fuel station isn't the only thing. Um, I've been here and for I get two that. And I don't. I hope I didn't give you guys that impression. And I do want you and Pat to know that I am reading four chapters of the most boring dry reading I've ever read compliments in Maine DEP and their fuel tank storage evaluation stuff but I'm doing it for you guys so we're gonna get through it. <laughs> Mr. Raines did you have a comment? <clears throat> I did I just wanted to say that um, I empathize with how you feel. Um, I sat in those chairs those past six months and I've heard you and Pat get up and talk um, very passionately about this and I'm in agreement with you and I think this document is a fantastic starting place and I think the first Ten points are kind of, um, we'd like this, and then the next ten pages are only recommendations, um, which can be agreed to or not. Um, I joined the board most recently because I want to be, like Phil says, I want to be the change that I, I'd like to see. And one of the things that I want to do is prevent this from happening again for another topic, for another land use ordinance for another area of town for another set of buildings or residences or, or anything like that and communication is key we all fall through the cracks at times and we're human beings and that's not an excuse but it does happen and I just wanted to let you know that you've done a fantastic job coming here and speaking your minds putting together this paperwork and I for one am gonna fight very hard to try to expedite this process to get something to get some kind of change going before we're here nine months from now talking about it again. Thank you. I You're appreciate welcome. that. Thank and you. I appreciate all of you and all of your time and all of your serious consideration to all of us. And thank you for suggesting the meeting.
Yes. I think that's a fabulous solution, and, and I think it would mean a lot to the voters and the citizens to see something in November that represents the planning board thinking about planning so that we are getting ahead of these pressures. Thank you for your time. Yeah, thank you, Secretary. I think, I think, I think listening to all your concerns and our concerns is sometimes we have to have the courage to do the right thing and not always what is expected. And that's something that we all have to keep in mind. <laughs> Any other comments related to the land use ordinance? Okay, moving on, uh, go ahead and open up uh, public comment. Anybody for public comment? Well, I'll comment. I just put you on the schedule to uh, make sure on Monday that I get some dates for you. <laughs> okay. uh, the next agenda item is approval of minutes. Uh, there were a couple of errors with regard to the minutes on page three, the bottom paragraph. Uh, it says Miss Bonine stated that she does expect anything regarding. I think that was supposed to be does not. What page? Uh, page, third page, bottom paragraph. Miss Bonine stated we she were excluded. We excluded the word "not." Correct. I believe so. Thank you. And that was a good catch, Mr. Reigns. Thank you for bringing that to my attention. And then uh, I think where it says Mr. Sa Sorry, is we're, that supposed to be? Well, are we on the same page? Yes, ma'am. Just below, we start the paragraph. Okay. About yes. Mr. Sudak. Did, was there a Mr. Sa oh. Sorry, or is that a, a misspelling? Okay. Different, uh, no, we different have project. Mm -hmm. We have two different. Yeah, okay. Mr. Sorry is the Woodland Pond. Mm -hmm. Okay, and just so we'll to change make sure. that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Right. And it's again on the top of the next page. Again, again Mr. The sorry again. Lots of S names. Yes, everywhere. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if we can make those amendments and corrections, mm -hmm. I would make a motion that we approve the meeting minutes as amended. Mm -hmm. I second that motion. Any further questions? No call vote. Who made the motion? I made the motion. Phil and Don. Second. Yeah. So yeah. Mr. Lucic is a yes. Mr. Chair was a yes. Yes. I'm a yes. 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 Okay. And a miss vote. Okay. Old business. Uh, final plan. Major subdivision. Woodland Pond. Alley Pond. Uh, R7 Lot 2 and Johnny Lane R866 Altus Engineer. Mr. Chair, um, <laughs> I want to go on record as saying that I have a conflict of interest with this project I'm as sure. I have interest in this, so I'm going to recuse myself from all discussion and all voting and actually remove myself from the table. Thank you for so that. So that you guys can proceed. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you Thank for you not making me. Thanks, <laughs> Good evening. Uh, for the record, I'm Eric Sari here on behalf of the applicant. Um, quick rundown of what's happened in the in intervening time here since we were last before you. Um, we had a little site walk with IFNW. Um, none of you guys were there, were you? Huh, okay. Well, we had fun. We tramped through the wetlands. Uh, it, was, uh, it was pretty wet back there. Um, we had a good time, and uh, a, a lot was done. We had a lot of discussions. And then uh, this past week, we got a letter from IFNW that sort of contradicted what we took away from the site walk, to be honest with you. Um, it also did not include some of the recommendations they had made uh, this past winter, which was very curious. Um, to boil it all down, uh, what they recommend to you, now these are recommendations only, they really have no authority over the project, uh, is for us to remove lot 11, which is this one here, and lots 3 and 4, and put those into open space. Uh, obviously, the applicant is very opposed to that. Um, in our opinion, the, the sensitive wetlands that are good turtle habitat, these right here, are for the most part in open space along with the rest of the project. This is the good stuff back in here. Um, we're already preserving that. Um, so it's up to the board to decide if you want to, you know, put us in a situation where we can take these lots away and put them someplace else on the property or go ahead with the project as proposed. Um, there's a plan B. Now, the plan B goes back in history a little ways. This is the 2000 uh, plan for Alley Pond Road itself. At that time, just to give you bearings here, 
This is the project site here. So Alley Pond Road is where Shelley continues on this way. Right. They had a future right away wrapping around the back of this lot here, which was curious. And then it showed up again, not called out as future. It actually calls it out as a right of way uh, on a 2002 plan, which uh, documented the easement down to the fire park for the fire department. So we looked at that as a plan B only. And this is not our preference uh, to resurrect that hammerhead and move those lots up into here. Same number of lots. The area of open space actually increases a little bit. Um, the amount of pavement goes up. So we're going to have some more storm water that we're going to have to manage, but I don't think that's the end of the world. That's something we can do. Um, I don't love it for the reason that it's sort of fragmenting the open space. Right now, you've got the Alley Pond subdivision common land in the back here, and we're putting lots in, the, in between it and the open space here on this parcel. So it kind of eliminates that corridor for wildlife to cut through. Um, we're amenable to whatever the board wants to do. We can do either one. But obviously, our preference is to go with what we have before you and what we've been discussing for six months now. Did, did IFNW offer an opinion on the proposed change? To, no. To, to no, this comment? was something I came up with this week, just thinking, okay, there's a way out. There's got to be a plan B. So. i got a question. Based yeah. on what you have there, those two lots that you moved up, are they going to have the appropriate frontage? It's a cluster, so there's no frontage requirement. Okay. Um, There's no lot, lot size requirement. Area? Yes, okay. I just um, you nobody's seen this yet, so yeah, I, yeah. I'm, <laughs> I'm like, dropping it on you. I'm really like, may I? Yeah, of course. Board, yeah, yeah please. So, and one question I do have for you, Eric. Get the princess chair out of the way. Uh, on site, we you and I have discussed that one for the lot moving the building up a little bit, a little bit. Is that something that building You're going to have to talk into the microphone, uh, Ms. Griffin. I believe that one. Yeah, was, you're going to have Thank to be able to the microphone. scolding because I needed no, that. I'm not I should know better. <laughs> recommendation. So I believe it was lot. Was it lot two, I, I it was, or it, was it? It was going to three. That we were going to pull the billing envelope back. It yeah. was back in the corner up. Which Are, is, is your applicant still amenable to doing I think that? That's easy. Okay. Oh, yeah, absolutely. We have no problem with that whatsoever. All right. So then this is plan A and plan B is... This is plan A, which you guys... Well, let, let, let me talk to that real quick. What Irish is talking about is putting a, another building restriction similar to the one that we put in the lot, back in lot four, which is no cut, no clear, no insurance. Right about here. Those so two lots. Back of these three, actually. Back of these three, the three. Of okay. these three um, would force <laughs> all the development up to the front of the lot towards the road where it belongs anyway. Can you show me the lots again that they're suggesting you eliminate? This guy, this guy, which we're already committed to not cutting half of anyway, um, and this one here. So that last one, they're suggesting it because you cross a fair amount of wetlands here? Yeah, is the that crossing right? is already there, and it is permit. Okay. It was an after-the-fact permit, but we walked the site with the Army Corps. We have our DEP permit and Army Corps permit. We're committed to <coughs> upsizing the crossing because it's not big enough for wildlife. Uh, Army Corps is very adamant about that one and the one that crosses the main stream here. So they will just get upsized to big, big pipes that are half buried in the, in the ground. So turtles can go underneath it. So that's already on the plan and part of the project. So plan. plan B. Would that require another chop from IFNW, though? Uh, I don't know. Okay. I mean, again, they don't have jurisdiction over this. It's a, they're making suggestions only. It's for the planning board to, to decide here what's what's best. I think they were they were more concerned about this wetland path coming down here because there is a little bit of a stream in there. Mm -hmm. Right, and, and that's, that's why. What, that's what you took away, right? That this sort of stream complex is what they were looking at. Yes. Yes. That's why I asked you, you know, to show me again where the lots were, uh, where they were suggesting taking the lots out. Yeah, so it's it's in this plan B, it would be this area, this area, and this lot in here. Would be open space, and the lots would be back in here. But open space would increase slightly. So you put the lots on top? Yes. With the team building? Yeah, with, yeah, with the new hammerhead there. Um, it's doable. So what is what is eliminating those lots accomplish? 
I, I think he wants as yeah. He wants as much development away from this tree complex, which goes down through this well here. That was some some better turtle habitat. Mr. Chair, so yes, again, the IFNW report is only suggestions. But it's up to the board to condition this as it may see fit. Having looked at those, having spoken with Mr. Sari at the site walk that we did, um, my personal opinion, although yes, I I think you guys have established by now, I love me some open space. Um, I think given that the crossing's already there, and given that the if the developer is willing to um, put that restriction on, I, it almost appears to me that th that the land would be better served by just having those that back part restricted. Um, I'm not real sure about that that one furthest lot closest to the fire lane. Um, this guy? Yeah. Okay, this, this is the one where the whole back half is already restricted? So when and we, that was at INW, that's right. W's request to begin with. That's right, that's right. So do you believe, and obviously I can't read that from that far away, um, <laughs> do you believe that you can put a no-cut type of buffer on the backs of those two lots that are next to the one that yeah. already has one yeah. and still create a large enough building envelope that essentially accomplishes the protections they want without um, without making your area unbuildable for yeah. that lot. Let's have a look. Okay, so the leach fields are up front already, which is good. And I put the wells way at the back. I can move the wells up and still maintain plenty of distance from those leach fields. Uh, the well radius itself can overlap the no-cut zone, so that's not a problem at all. So it's definitely feasible. Yeah, thank you. I'd also like to echo that I would agree that at the end of the site walk with IFNW, I did not expect this letter yeah. mm -hmm. to say what it did either. So um, why did why did they put that verbiage in there? I don't know. Why are we getting blindsided? Because so I don't know. This is where I'm torn. Is this if, if we make concessions for one development and the next one comes in and, and we have kind of thumbed our finger in the eye of IFNW's recommendation, um, I, I think it puts us in a very precarious position and it's, it creates a standard. Right. Wow. And I, I'm just reluctant to go down that road, but I don't mm -hmm. how do other board members feel about that. Um, I'm kind of feeling that the, uh, the plan B is the way to go here. Um, I think it, it but does that necessitate another IFNW? Well, um, it's it's all in upland plan B. Well, right. it doesn't change the areas. I mean, the areas were yeah. investigated. Uh, right. Well, they would yeah, have to come and looking. Good yeah. point. Yeah. Yeah. There isn't yeah. any wetland up in there, that no wetland area, up really. Yeah. This wetland we walked through was not turtle habitat for sure. Right. Um, this is just a little chunk of isolated wetland in the back forest. And so this was the critical stuff coming through here, down to here, yeah, which yeah. crosses over to the pond. Yeah, it looks like a no-brainer to me to do Plan B. It was simple. I just and it keeps us in the good graces with IFNW. That's yep. right. And okay. also, I think, you know, for, for the homeowners in that area, they were very concerned mm -hmm. with the environmental impact to wildlife, and I think this resolves that. And you guys are amenable to doing that. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I wouldn't have shown it to you if you weren't ready to do it. And I think that I think that the, the what I'm seeing there is that you know the the path of the wildlife that we're trying to preserve. Um, you know, if that was somebody's lot where that crossing is, well, then it's it's less um, you know less protected than if it's open space per se. You know, mm -hmm. if it's open space, nobody's running a lawnmower. Or uh, encroaching on the on yeah, the don't their grass clippings in yeah. the wetland, which is you know. And I, and I think as a developer, I think I like this this plan better, anyways. Well, he's got to pay for a little more road, of course. Oh. But uh, I got one question. Yeah, go please. I got one question on this. You said the other plan when you had that up, you had to upgrade the drainage. 
Sure. Yes. This um, will still happen on this? That would still happen. What, what I did was, this was in response to, to Mr. Rain's comments, uh, received the email. There's some erosion occurring in here. I think what's happening is all this runoff is now channelized in the roadside swale that wasn't there before. So I was looking to take that across the street, away from Karen Lane's property, um, and put it through the system here. Uh, that actually, I ran the numbers already. It actually helps the drainage situation a little bit. So it's totally doable. I mean, the design is done already, so it's, it's ready to rock. Iris, just do we have to uh, do another notice for butters on that other end if they move the lots up there? Or are we, has that ship already sailed? Is that, are we good? That's a good procedure. As far as like for you. public hearing, et cetera. And, and no. So the no butter, I don't know how to phrase this. There's no new abutters that, that are being touched by this. All, this. all the abutters that are touching the property were already noticed, and it's the same number of lots. Okay. Okay. So but we're move, you're moving the house um, lots um, up yes. there, which would change their visual. Yes. Yeah. I, I just, does that create a it's conflict not, for us, and do we have to go back to public comment or no? Um, I don't. That's a good Hannah question. <laughs> Technically, um, I would say probably no, but I don't know if just based on all of the conversation, the board would still want to. Um, um, yeah, I, I, I would say that, that projects change all the time through the process. Yeah. And it doesn't get re-noticed. Yeah. So. Yeah. I don't think you technically have to, but okay. you, there's nothing saying you can't. If I, you don't I would want be inclined to, to not uh, go through that process again, just because if, if abutters are concerned about the project, then I think they should be following along. Yep. Yeah. Correct. Um, I do have two things. One, first of all, for those of us that were at the site walk, um, Derek York's suggestions on site and what came in that letter from the other gentleman, uh, we were all blindsided right. by this. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. And, I, and I asked a lot of questions and I tromped through the woods because that's what I like to do. I, 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 <laughs> um, can, can I see plan A again? Please. But that being said, I don't want to not have this read into record as it was requested to be. So I was going to um, read that if that's okay with you, Mr. Chair. Please do. So we received an email from Ms. Mullane, Karen Mullane, that says, Hello, I am unable to attend this evening's meeting. However, I request my concerns be on record for this meeting. I am requesting the public hearing be reopened. With the new information resulting from the environmental review and recommendations, I would like to know what the response will be from the developer in the town with the, availability, with the ability of discussing it in a public hearing. I would also like to discuss what the resolution will be from the developer to correct the issue with the water runoff as it is dumping into my front yard, causing erosion and other issues. I'd like to see this on paper, not just verbal approach. Thank you, Karen. Although I do want to remind you that you guys had all previously um, agreed that unless we had new information, which this is not new information, just new recommendations. So, um, would, would you be amenable to going with Plan B and uh, putting in writing a formal uh, stormwater management plan to to address the concerns of the abutter? Yeah, I mean, it's it's just a change to the stormwater plan we already have and already have submitted. It just makes it slightly better. So it's it's already there, and I, the calcs are done. I just need to revise the, the narrative. You're you're agreeable to oh, yeah, totally. doing that? Yeah, it's. So both of her issues are being addressed. Thank you, board. <laughs> Can I ask two questions? One, um, the on your plan B, where that new road would come out, is that where we parked and kind of met for the sidewalk? Exactly. Walk? Okay. Yeah, so it's taking one of the legs of the existing hammerhead um, and turning it into proper road. <laughs> okay. Um, second question, under this plan, does that chunk the the open space there yep. does that connect to any open space in it, the original subdivision a or is connection that i left right here that's all i could do but okay. there is a path so it is technically contiguous okay yeah and then of course it's contiguous with the piece across the road right okay uh, which is goes into just tons of woods so do we need to motion that to get it on the record is that yeah. That you're accepting this is their preliminary plan? With conditions. Yes. With those conditions. Yes. All right. I will make a motion that we find this complete with the condition that you go with your plan B, mm -hmm. move, the, move the lots up, and that we uh, you submit a formal uh, written 
water management plan to address the concerns of, of the abundant. Yep. I'll second that. All in favor? Thank you, sir. Okay, do you guys want us to come back and do final again? Um, I think it. Yeah, this was just the preliminary okay, plan just, at this point, still. Correct. So. Well, this is this is final. Is it? This yeah. is final. This is final. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. Irish, are you comfortable? Like, I'm comfortable. If you're comfortable, if they submit their updated plans with the letter. Uh, to the abutter regarding what they they intend to do with the drainage. Does that answer the mail for for you and for the town? Uh, yes, okay. and um, if the only question I would have to that is: Would the board prefer that Mr. Sari direct a letter directly to Miss Mullane, or would you be more comfortable if he submitted a task and we just sent it out? I think it'd be appropriate to be to the town yeah. and CC her. I think okay. that is I prefer that as well, but I want to make sure that we're yeah. if you're asking. It's addressing our right. concerns and it's giving her visibility on the issue which she has requested. And I think that administratively is the neat and tidy way to put a bow on it. And I agree. I just okay. want to make sure if I'm following what you want. Okay. <laughs> so. What I'll do is a cover letter outlining all the changes and then you guys will be copied mm -hmm. on it. Excellent. Okay. Thank you, sir. All right. Thank you very much, guys. Thank Appreciate you. it. Thank you for making our job a little easier. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, that's right. Um, not to delay the process, but if this is a new plan now, we haven't seen anything related to the, the new road lots. Oh. for the new lots. Okay. Um, well, wait, the lot size is there. I mean, the road itself, I mean, that's the flat part of the site, so that's... About as easy as right. it gets. I mean, I, I don't think it needs to go through engineering review. I think we're just going to submit the, the calcs that go with it. Um, the plans would be amended to reflect that. Obviously, I'd have a new planner profile or a new grading plan, um, and maybe a few new test bits uh, for septics. But that's it. I mean, it's it's it sounds like a lot, but it's actually pretty minor in my world. Anyway. Right. Does that answer the mail for SMPDC? Does that pass muster? And it's on. <laughs> Or, do you, or do you need time to digest that and, and get back to us? I, I would be cautious to approve a final plan when you just saw it for the first time today. Okay. Um, th I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it, but I I would say next meeting we can approve a final plan if we can review. I don't really need to send it out to an engineer, but I would like to see the plans before the board approves them. Okay. Um, I, th I don't think that's unreasonable. Yeah. So in that case, Eric will get us a copy digital and we will send that over to SMPDC for SMPDC to review and give a thumbs up thumbs down or what have you in okay. the next meeting the board can vote yeah. does do we need to do the can entire just, public hearing and such or can we can we make a motion just to streamline the process for the applicant is it appropriate if SMPDC approves of the changes made and they have the appropriate documentation if it passes with SMPDC can, can we vote on it tonight I, I, and I make that, that a condition? Be a great condition, actually. And that way, we're not holding up the applicant. So, if I'm not mistaken, what you guys are looking to do is to make a motion to approve the plan B as the final plan pending SMPDC's approval, and with the condition, the additional condition that uh, Mr. Sari puts in writing the storm water. For Ms. Mullane's property. I think that is, is that less administratively yeah, arduous for all parties involved <laughs> and, and moves it along if, if it is procedurally correct to do it that way. We, we've been in front of you guys a while on this. It's, I think it's time yeah. to move it on. Yeah. Does that, that answer the mail for you? Is that reasonable? Sure. Okay, I would like to amend my motion that okay. we do what you said. <laughs> <laughs> I've been waiting for a man to say that all my oh, Sorry. <laughs> okay, so. Phil has made a motion to amend the motion to include the SMPDC. So we have approval. a approval. So with SMPDC's but review and second? approval, that will be a, an additional condition to the previous aforementioned conditions. Okay. I'll second that motion. All in favor? Okay. All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, guys. Appreciate it. Yeah. And I'll deal with Cam. <laughs> Good luck with that. But it's all going to be fixed. See? You guys got more land around now. All right, next item uh, for old business, preliminary plan, major subdivision, Worcester Road, R3217E. 
R2 Zone, Provincial Equity Development, LLC. Thank you. Good night. Thanks, guys. Right. <laughs> File up. Hello again. It's a little jail. Mr. Chair, if I may. Or Mr. Vice. Mr. Vice. Mr. Vice Chair. Mr. Acting Chair. There we go. Um, I'd like I'm to. I have a chair. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually, as an aside, I'm actually in your your position. I'm vice chair of my hometown board, and my the yeah, the chair is going to be out for the next two months. So lucky you. Yeah, lucky me. <laughs> um, anyway, um, I'd like to address the. Uh, comments from can you introduce yourself please oh again sorry about that you don't have to every time um, my bad my bad <laughs> mike sudak from atar engineering here on behalf of providential equity development thank you <laughs> thank you mike um, <laughs> if i may i'd like to respond Thanks. to the uh input from public comment first okay right. Please um, and if i may pose a question to mr cobb directly the stream that you're talking about is that the the man-made swale right at the tree line okay I'm going to address to you then, and we can, well, I guess we can't deliver it since the public hearing are closed. But anyway, um, so yeah, um, talking about the, the first comment from Mr. Cobb, talking about rerouting the stream or preserving the stream um, through our stormwater model. It's actually a deep deep enough swale, the man-made swale, but it's a deep enough, deep enough swale that it's going to be hydraulically disconnected from how we're managing the stormwater from the proposed road. We're going to have a roadside swale that's elevated enough that even the bottom of that is going to have adequate cover over a culverted crossing that's effectively going to mirror the existing swale that you guys on the right side of the planning board um, bench saw out at the sidewalk. Um, so that should be good. There should be no um, upstream uh, effects from that. Um, next comment was regarding the preservation of the tree line um, at, at and to echo what Mr. Cobb said, um, at a minimum, the um, the rear yard setback is going to be preserved for all of those lots. So that's 25 feet in the R2 zone. Um, so at the very least, that's what's going to be preserved um, along your, your property line there to the north. Um, the next comment, you're absolutely right. Um, there's going to be a home, uh, either a road maintenance association, homeowners association, depending on how it wants to be set up to either incorporate the uh, stormwater management elements or not, is going to be established. Um, for this development. And then the last item regarding the fence, um, it's something that I certainly can confer with my client on. Um, you're right that that's not an insignificant distance. It's probably, yeah, between 400 and 500 feet. Um, and while being respectful to the ailments that you listed for your wife and also being respectful for the cost for that, um, it is fencing going to adequately solve the issue i guess it's just the question i'd ask for you we can certainly deliberate we're at preliminary plan we're going to have a couple more or we're going to have another whack at this for final um so we can get together and i'll we'll see what we come up with and that'll be presented for final is how i'd like to handle it now um, it, it's not something that's required for this type of development it, it's certainly a um a fair consideration to have privacy it is wide open out there now um, so we can take a look at what's reasonable um, for providing that kind of privacy and also just being realistic with the type of development and the size of the lots and what type of privacy you can actually gain be gained out there because yeah all these houses are going to be two-story including yours which is wonderful it's up on the hill um, so we'll take a look at it that's what I promise to do for now um, one, one item for consideration, sure. sir. Would you guys be amenable um, to, and maybe it, it solves both problems and just throwing ideas out there. Uh, you know, you put up an eight foot tall fence, you've got two story houses on either side. It really does not solve the visual issue for you. Yep. It is a barrier. Um, and, and I certainly understand your concerns. Would you be amenable to considering a, a, a visual buffer, um, some type of vegetation possibly that would be on that side of the property so it's not to affect Mr. Cobb's property. Just just something to break it up visually for the people you're selling houses to and, and to him. Is that is that something in the realm of possibilities that you would consider? It's in the realm of possibility, but I will say if the intent is to completely solve the issue of 
of privacy, then that's not going to do that. Right. Th that'll provide some amount of sound dampening. It'll be it'll be a beautification of the space of the rear yard. But besides that, I mean, unless we're putting staggered rows of, of evergreens for 400 feet, and mm -hmm. I am going to, I don't think I need to confer with my with my clients to say that that is a gigantic expense. Okay. Um, so we, we will look into the options. That's what I can okay. promise for now. But your your comment is noted. Thank you, sir. Yep. And um, and thank you for the comments, sir. And the other um, abutter that spoke, Pollock. Mm -hmm. um, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Um, so I can go into this with you, or it can just bleed in. One can bleed into the other. Um, stormwater concerns, completely legitimate. Um, and if I'm cor I couldn't quite see where you were pointing, ma'am. Um, bottom, bottom, all the way, all the way down the south, right? Okay. So. Yep, got you here. Thank you. Um, so the closest point of your property is, I'm going to say, over 1,500 feet from the closest point of where we're proposing to develop. Um, even so, the entire parcel is being analyzed um, with the stormwater permit that we have applied for with the state, and we are required to demonstrate that we have a peak runoff reduction or the flow of stormwater does not change in the developed condition relative to how it is right now um, at the property line and at the downstream resources. And the downstream resources in this case are, there's a lot of culverted crossings of Worcester Road. It's probably four or five 30 inch pipes that all flow west and it becomes the headwaters of Pine Hill Brook. So that's the resource we analyzed. Um, and we're demonstrating, uh, we have a couple on site BMPs I'm going to get into with these gentlemen, but we have demonstrated that we have a peak runoff reduction across all rain events, so you should have no adverse effect for your property. Thank you. Um, that's all I have for a butter comments. I'd be happy to quickly go over uh, the progress we've made since the last time we saw you gentlemen and to catch up to speed the two new members. Um, so really at this point, it's just um, progress we've made with the state agencies. Um, for those of you unfamiliar, we've received sign off from the Maine Natural Areas Program and the Historic Preservation Commission. Uh, both statements of no concern. Um, there, we had two species hits from IFNW, um, one for, I'm going to get this right, the spice bush swallowtail, which is a butterfly. Um, we received a statement of no concern from Mr. Philip Demanier, who's the species expert from IFNW, so that's good. The other one is, as the Alley Pond people are familiar, Mr. Derek York's um, habitat actually I guess three hits, habitat for both the black racer and the landing's turtle. Um, there's a couple hits in the area that the IFNW, I guess, overall map pulled. Um, spoke with him in the middle of last week. He requested an updated species list of the forested wetlands uh, near our development here. Um, our wetland scientist, Mike Cuomo, prepared that, sent it to him last Friday. And in addition, we went out and documented with dozens and dozens of photos, those wetland complexes closest to our development. So all of that's been sent to them last Friday. Um, I'm keeping on him, and that's, uh, I hope to have uh, his sign off in hand for final. Besides that, um, for the DEP, um, the tier of stormwater permit we're in is the stormwater management law, uh, because we're over an acre of impervious created. Um, the notice of intent to file was posted, which is why Ms. Pollock is here tonight. Um, and that was applied for and accepted, so we're into the statutory review, review period, which is 45 days. Um, so if I don't have that permit in hand for when I see you gentlemen for final, it will be forthcoming. Um, and that's really all I have to update. Oh, no, I don't. Mr. Roy, you specifically. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, I think middle of, middle of June is last time I saw you, and the big talking point was lot six here, whether or not there, uh, as it was previously designed, had a reasonable enough envelope for not only a building but on-site utilities. Um, so, what we ended up doing was all of the roads on, or excuse me, all of the lots on that side of the road, so two, four, six, eight, and ten, all got pushed. Uh, to the left of the page as you're looking, so slightly west. Um, 
still don't need any waivers. We meet the minimum lot width requirement. Um, so two and four got slightly smaller, six got slightly smaller, eight and 10 got slightly larger. Um, but I believe house six is designed now is a much more agreeable um, envelope overall for both the building and the on-site utilities. So that was my last comment. Thank you for doing that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, good comment. I think it looks better overall. So, um, and with that, I will conclude my summary. I'd be happy to take any questions from the board. Any questions from the board? So it's not a question, but it's a clarification. Okay. The um, black racer and the spice tail swallow butterfly and, <laughs> and whatnot um, yeah. are definitely the right species, but it's not a Blanding's turtle that's on your property. It is a spotted turtle. Oh, thank you. Well, <laughs> appreciate that. <laughs> and Rick would know the difference. <laughs> I have never seen either, so thank our you for clarifying. Board, spotted. Our onboard turtle expert is kind of nice. Are we looking for any motions on this this evening, or are we, we're still waiting for final, correct? We can approve our preliminary plan. We can approve plan. Preliminary. Yeah. I would make a motion that we approve the preliminary project as presented currently. I'll second that. All in favor? All right. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. All right, our uh, next item for old business is amendments to the land use ordinance, subdivision regulations, village overlay district design guidelines. Um, I know previous discussion uh, earlier this evening, I, I think, I, I know I have some strong feelings about it. I don't want to speak for the board. Um, I would be amenable to us holding ourselves to tap. Go ahead, sorry. No, no, I don't mean to interrupt you, but okay. I've got an exciting update. Y'all busy next Thursday because we can uh, throw it together for next Thursday if you guys are amenable to that. Um, I have sent, I had sent a, I was trying to get things organized so that we would all know before we left for a joint meeting between planning board, select board, get everything ironed out for the, you good with that? I'm on vacation, but I will tell the conference in and make it happen. You better find something I, high with a lot of signal. I will make yes. it happen. We have Wi-Fi at the cabin, so. So now I'll catch that on your way out. No, I'll what, what time <laughs> on you guys what later. time on Thursday, ma'am? Uh, you're welcome. Um, I'm going to assume any time after 6 p.m. when the town hall is closed. But you I say think 6:30 p.m. I think that works whatever for works for everybody, for you guys, let me know, and we're going to make this. We're going we're to make it happen. Can you send out an email reminder beforehand? Absolutely. Okay. So I'm not. Jerry, what are you trying to? No, it's the 27th, right? Yes. Seven days from today. Yes. It's the 27th. Yes. Yeah, Today's the 20th. Okay. No. I'm, I'm like, wait, what? Okay. I, I am also on vacation, p. but I can maybe zoom in. I'm not positive. I'm going to be camping, so I don't know if I'll have Well, signal. and any anybody that I would request, any of you that have anything that are not necessarily going to be here to bring it yourselves, if you can email it to Terry and I so we can have it and... Uh, make sure that you guys' voices are heard, whether your Zoom is, because I know you, I, know, I don't know your vacation plans, but I know you sketchy on yours as oh, far as here. reception. Be sketchy. As far as reception. <laughs> I will be there. I will be I'll there. Be here. So okay. I would like to make a motion that we uh, shelve that item until uh, Thursday at 6.30 p.m. on the 27th. Uh, and we will make best effort with the select board to have a joint session and get a quality product put together um, in time for the vote. And I think that's reasonable and it, it gives us all an opportunity to do a little homework. I would ask that before that meeting, uh, the previous edits that, that we had recommended. I'm going to look into that. If we can review the, 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 uh, the video and make sure that all those edits are in because they were not in this most recent week. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. I will... I'll talk to him to see if he can yeah, be at that yeah. meeting. This hasn't been my project so far, so I haven't no had much to it's comment on. Parts, and I'll make sure. If he can be there, I'll have him do that. And okay. I don't know if, if you remember, but um, we agreed not to discuss it too much because Irish wasn't here and you wanted her input. Right. So and I will very be little, there. Very yes. little was discussed. That's I will true. be there. made yeah. just a couple of suggestions. Okay. So, so I will be there. I will get, um, Hannah will talk to Lee J, get whatever he's got. I will take whatever we get together if you guys have any comments in advance that you know of and I will, I'm gonna send everything out to you guys even if it's just these two suggestions independently you know the the lists from 
um, Pat, you. and thank you guys. Perfect. Even if it's just the list from Pat and the list from Jeremy, along with whatever we have for updates that were included, I'm going to send that to you guys individually marked high priority. Mm -hmm. If you guys can make time to read that over the next week, would be great. Yeah, awesome. Sound good? That sounds great. Thank you for making that happen. Try so I'll it. make a motion that we <laughs> go ahead and shelve that item until Thursday, the 27th at 6.30 p.m. for a joint session with the select board to iron out all those details and put forth a quality uh, design guide standard to go before the voters at the next vote. I'll second that motion. All in favor? All right. Thank you, Irish. Uh, oh, don't thank me. I'm the one that created the train wreck to begin with. Huh? <laughs> All right. Next item on the agenda, approval of findings of fact for Berwick Iron and Metal. I do have all three of those to be, I actually have three, um, there's three there to be signed. I have them all three here, three findings you of fact. You have the originals for signature? I do. Okay. And they met all of the requirements uh, we have. I think there was a certain issue in the last oh, I'll get that. Well. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay. These were actually prepared for Mike's signature. Does that does that matter? Shoot. Oh, it's his name on there. Yep. I Mike LaRue certify. And and I know he was involved in this one and with all the conditions. I just don't want to commit an administrative. Does so all three copies have his name on them? Uh, let's Probably. Okay. Because I wrote them for him. It sure does. But I will tell you what, if you can I am going out of town tomorrow, but if you Need my if, if Mike can sign them, great. If not, I can be here when you guys open to sign these before I get on the road. Yeah. If that, I would say if you're it. here now approving them, you should sign them, even so though it has his name on there. I we can, can alter, you can say as amended with my name to sign, okay. and I can sign now, yeah, or er, okay. and they can change it and you can sign it tomorrow, okay? So Work for you? Yeah. You all realize we're closed tomorrow, right? Oh, you're oh. closed. I'll come in. I can come in in the morning, or I can stay and do it right after the meeting. I'm trying to get on the road the for nine. <laughs> so I got a six-hour drive in. Ah. Uh, <laughs> it means he'll be here at noon. Great. <laughs> <laughs> we all know how vacations can I, go. Can I pen and ink it? One line across. Can, can you pen and ink it? Is that can, or do I need he, to return it? Can he cross it? off? I don't see why not. Sure. sure. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it's it's contracts all the time. I mean, I can, I can go all grab. of us on the record saying yes. So <laughs> if that's wrong, but yeah, I wait, can go next yes. door and get some white out, and then we can whoever has the <laughs> no, most. No, no, um, no, no, you no, know. no white out. No, no, just, no. <laughs> so I lined out Mike's line name, <laughs> and I added in front of chair vice chair. Does that answer the mail? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, yeah. 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 As long as it all says it's you, then we can go with that. Easy. <laughs> Would we need to get? A copy of the signature. Your signature? It is. Yeah. Yeah. I think these are okay. Yeah. You sign it. Okay. It's all pretty quick. <laughs> yes, you can cross it out. We have a stalker <laughs> who's giving a little procedural tips. <laughs> I 
I give these back to you before I lose the shuffle. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you. All right. New business. Uh, sketch plan. Malloy Brook, Major Subdivision, School Street and Heritage Street, R49, Lot 3, Atar Engineering. And yes, you got to give it again for the record. I was getting <laughs> you, there. You were the same <laughs> Didn't even give me a chance this time. <laughs> Hello again. Uh, Mike Sudak, Atar Engineering, here on behalf of SOW Solar Incorporated. Thank you for having me. Uh, so, um, let's see where to begin. So, this is our sketch plan review, um, which I can't remember how the town of Berwick handles that, if it's non binding or if you gentlemen actually vote on it. But either way, um, a brief overview for you, um, again, specifically for the two gentlemen on the left. Um, so this is 67 acres, in, also in the R2 zone. Um, what you'll see across the center of the page there is um, this was a separate portion of this parcel was approved in, I believe, the spring of last year for a large solar farm. Um, but you'll see in the back there, kind of weaving between the wetlands, is the 10-acre occupied area for that. Um, just wanted to show you the overall parcel before I can switch to what we're proposing here up front. Um, so what we're proposing is a seven lot uh, residential subdivision, single family dwellings, all frontage lots. Um, so this is the dual frontage lot, uh, dual frontage parcel between School Street Route 9 down bottom and Heritage Drive here climbing up on the right. Uh, so we're proposing conventional lots again, um, six of them fronting on Heritage Drive and one of them fronting on School Street um, just to the east of where that um, solar access road comes in. Um, for those of you that were on the board at that time, we had originally endeavored uh, a concept plan for this back the middle of last year um, that used that access drive. Um, which is approved from the DOT as a 20-foot gravel drive, gated gravel drive. Um, we sought to potentially improve that uh, in the hopes of constructing a road from it. The DOT denied that. So since then, we went back to the drawing board a little bit. This is what we've come up with for now. Um, and yeah, besides that, pretty typical uh, conventional subdivision. Um, all lots will be on-site individual wells, on-site um, individual septic systems. Um, Wetland delineation, frontal pool study, high intensity of soil survey all have carried forward um, from the last time this parcel was before you. And let's see what else I have here on my ledger. Um, we are requesting, I don't know if it needs to be considered at this time, but we will be requesting one waiver, um, which is from your land use uh, section 6.3, specifically table 6.3, which is your. Um, table of uh, dimensional requirements for the R2 zone, um, specifically minimum lot width. Um, so we meet the frontage requirement of 150 feet for all these lots, but you can see here down bottom, lot six and seven uh, have a, a bump to them in the rear of each of those respective lots, one of them because of a, uh, I believe, an old schoolhouse uh, parcel that is kind of in the middle of the uh, School Street frontage, and then lot in the rear of Lot Seven, just to accommodate the uh, the abutting solar road. Um, so we're requesting a waiver for both of those lots from 150 feet uh, lot width to 140 feet. Just couldn't quite get it otherwise. Um, that's really it. Um, yeah, here for sketch review. Be happy to take any questions the board may have. Thank you. Which two lots were they? Six and seven. Six and seven. Yes, sir. I can see those. Irish, was it was it you that forged along the letter, or was it you oh, that forged along yeah, the letter from the abutting? Yeah. That length. Okay. The abutter. It's probably Terry. Uh, Terry. Um, you should or have. Or Heritage, Heritage Drive. Uh, Mr. Clement's <coughs> letter from his attorney. Yes, you should have to, both of those. Okay, I don't have it in the packet. They said it wouldn't be in the packet. It was emailed. I, I didn't see that. There was a separate folder with those in it. Yeah, I gave you the cover letters, and then I have the, let's see. I know it got emailed out. Somewhere. 
my, my only concern and the reason I bring it up and I, I don't see it in front of me but I did it did get emailed um, it, one of the abutters has a letter from his attorney uh, specifically related to the stormwater management plan and there's some very strong language in there with regard to uh, the legality and our ability to vote on that and so we're moving forward I think we're gonna need to get input from the town attorney I'd be happy to speak to that briefly I I, if you if you're able to yes sir I did receive all the information from from um, one of the abutters attorneys that you're ref referring to um, and Iris you're also welcome to jump in here and speak to this but um, we I've been familiar with this pro with this parcel before for the past two years um, so I've been familiar with that potentially becoming an eventuality with this perspective development um, and what accompanied or shortly followed this submission of this application to the town um, we submitted to the town to Irish um, a pretty comprehensive list of correspondence that we'd had over the past couple of years between Alice's, Allison Saroy the regional manager from DEP um, Phil Saucier your town's attorney and um, just correspondence between those two entities and my clients legal counsel um, and uh, with all of that combined, we believe that that has provided sufficient enough evidence to support our belief that we have RTI to make this proposed development happen. And what I was going to propose, you kind of led me there, was that moving forward, we'd be happy to have your legal counsel formalize that um, so we, we can be allowed to proceed. But I think we'd be negligent in, in our duties as the board if we did not have the town attorney take a chunk on that letter. I'm not I'm not a lawyer. I never played one on television, and I don't <laughs> want to get drug into the legal quagmire of, of making a bad legal decision for the town. So I think it's probably incumbent on the town attorney to make that call and not, not us. Well, yeah. what we're doing, well, there has been obviously a lot of back and forth behind the scenes. So we are um, looking into the legalities of it. First of all, trying I'm trying to get somebody from the DEP to give me something in writing stating who can and cannot alter that stormwater permit because ultimately that's what it's going to come down to. Um, that has proven thus far to be about as easy as nailing jello to a tree, but I continue on. Um, hopefully I'll get something of clarity from them directly because ultimately that's what it's going to boil down to. Uh, I do believe from everything else that I have found out, and unless Hannah knows anything different, um, what it may come down to is us, I say us, you as a board, uh, reviewing this, uh, taking all input from abutters and, and public and myself, and then determining whether or not it would be able to be approved. And then if the board <laughs> votes to approve it, um, or whether the board votes to approve it or deny it, Either party can then enter into a civil lawsuit, which would then put the development on hold until the civil lawsuit is um, then Could we, resided. Is but we're going to try and prevent that out. We're trying to get out front of it. If it's in the realm of possibilities to take a reasonable person's approach, I, I would like us to do that. Um, and, and if, can we ask the town attorney to review <laughs> that document? Because when people <coughs> get a Sorry. letter from somebody's lawyer that says, you know, that the the board should not vote on this because it's illegal. I, yeah, we're trying to get in front I, I just of it. want to make sure we're, we're within our powers and our, our realm of what's reasonable to, to move forward or to say no. And, mm -hmm. and I just don't have enough information, and I don't think the board has enough Is that letter in this package? You should have two. Not. Both letters no. are on the back of Malloy Brook. Yeah. Um, and also, they while you're looking for package. it, I have been in contact with Phil Saucier. He was sent all of the communication we've received um, from the lawyers. Uh, we have not received a formal comment back from him regarding the ones that were just sent or just received the other day. Um, so we are working on that. But that said, are they able to do whatever they need to? Yes. For this the the so opinion we'll we get have something from, from the state that says uh, yeah, we're trying. She said they're they're checking with with Phil, our, Phil Sosi, our, our attorney. Okay. Um, and I'm trying to still, regard, quite frankly, regardless of whether or not we can get something from Phil, I'm still trying to get something from the DEP because I feel that that's information that we need to know where we've got um, these two parcels that are both kind of hinging on this DEP stormwater permit and I think it needs to come from them. Uh, our town attorney can certainly state whether or not you guys can vote on it. 
but ultimately I think without no disrespect intended to either party I think I might stand a slight better chance of getting through to them being a, a municipal employee to get the DEP to put something in writing which both parties will need if it comes down to court anyway so um, yeah so we're already on top of getting Phil Hannah's already yeah. Yep. Our, involved. our I just sentiment want to avoid from putting anybody in the town in the legal crosshairs and nope. costing yeah. us more legal money than we need. To I don't want to be involved either. So I, I think I just know. I just go on record as saying you know I, I mean I read this just the last paragraph of this is legal opinion, and I think that you know from my my experience as a developer, I think that he states the obvious that only the DEP can amend the permit. So we're not the, the question out. is who has the right to request an amendment from DEP. That's the question that's in play right now, Les, is whether uh, Steve Clement, as the person who owns Heritage Estates, is the only person who has the right to, uh, to request an amendment with DEP, or whether anybody who's going to be, who owns parcels adjacent can. Um, because DEP has been, uh, I've seen written evidence from DEP involving this particular situation where they kind of have both trended both ways well nobody can anybody can nobody can anybody can they really need to they need well, to settle again, on again is that, that what does that have to do with the planning board if, if that's a DEP issue and the, the, right. you know they need that to figure out how to amend that with the DEP us. yes and that's, that's, it has nothing to do with us I'm not I'm not going to vote on what the DEP has to do well that's why we're trying to get the the answer from our town attorney of whether or not you guys can vote on it which um, yep. you guys can vote on it um, Phil is trying to get some guidance towards you as far as what the uh, DEP requirements are but ultimately, your job as a board is to review the, the projects before you as they appear. You can ask those questions. You can ask for that documentation. You can condition the project on the ability, obviously, for the DEP uh, permit to be amended. You, you do have the right to, to vote on it. Um, we're trying to, I'm trying to nail down what whether DEP is going to allow them to do that so as to I, save I the applicants time. I think premature without anything from the DEP. That's, that's my right. personal yeah, yeah. That, that's Well, there's no I vote that would happen tonight anyway. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Since this is just a sketch this plan, is, the only thing is. that you would decide tonight if you wanted to would be scheduling a site walk. There is no approval or anything of a yeah. sketch plan uh, what's, in your What's ordinance. available for us to do a site walk? Mr. Chair, if I may. Yes, please. Before, before, before you get into that, I'm sorry to disrupt you, Hannah. That's okay. Um, i got to find my notes. <laughs> ju just... Um, I'm glad, I'm glad to hear. I couldn't remember off the top of my head if Berwick was, was a town where you had to vote formally on sketch plans. So th this is just presenting a concept to you. Um, everything that's been discussed, um, while it may, in, in my opinion, be jumping, be jumping the shark, I understand that it's an eventuality that the town has to consider. Um, just a little bit of context um, as we move forward. Um, just what we're talking about here, I know both the letters are rather long in length. I'd just like to sum summarize um, at least the information that's presented to me, and I promise I'll be quick. Um, so everything that is being considered here or, th or that's being contentious here is regarding Heritage Drive. Um, Heritage Estates is four phases, many, many units that continues off the page uh, to the north. Um, there's a very large site location and development permit that was obtained from the DEP. Um, my company actually worked on the final phase of that um, back in, boy, when I was in high school. Um, but um, it was granted back, I believe, in the early 2000s, I believe, 02. And then in 2007, the road, Heritage Drive, either in its entirety or all of everything that was built and um, the entire width of the right-of-way, including the stormwater management elements, was conveyed to the town. So it is, it is a town road, has been since 2007. Um, that's been confirmed through the information that I sent to Irish, and it, we'd be happy to present to you either in its conglomerated summary or in something that's more formalized as we've described here tonight. Um, and the thing that I really wanted to bring up is Heritage Drive, all of the stormwater infrastructure that's in place out there right now is completely hydraulically separate from this parcel. There's a berm, there's a roadside swale immediately off the edge of pavement in Heritage. Um, we'll see it when we get to a site walk 
for those of you that went to the last sidewalk, you probably would have seen it. Um, there's beyond the roadside swale, there's a berm that basically runs on our property line. So everything west of that in our parcel, everything in our parcel drains through these two darker transparent hatches. There's two culvert crossings that leave the site flowing underneath School Street south. Those are going to be our analysis points. We are not hydraulically connected to Heritage Drive at all, aside from any prospective driveway culverts that would have to come in from these frontage lots. So the position that we've received from the state, um, because my client does not own land that's associated with the, with the permit that the abutters attorney is representing, nor has he owned it at any point in time, all that we would need to proceed is a new application that is received at planning board approval with permission from the town because the town is the holding entity for that right of way. So there's no requirement for the new subdivision to do their own uh, stormwater management permit? There is, but it's completely independent. It's a new application. We would, we would file a new permit with the state. It would be reviewed on, on its own merits. And the position that we've received from state, from all the entities I summarized earlier, was that we do not have to request a transfer of that permit. We do not have to amend that permit. We don't have to be involved with that permit. That's the position that we've been presented. And again, we'll talk in the state and the town will come to a formal consensus on that, but just sharing my perspective on. Okay. Why, why was this, why was this an issue then? Was this part of one parcel at that time? Say again. I said, was this part of one parcel at that time? So is this, I, I don't want to, I don't want to project on, on what the issue of, of an abutting part, part abutting entity is, but from my perspective, the issue is that the lawyer and the abutter that presented that letter believes that they still have rights over Heritage Drive, specifically the stormwater management elements on our frontage or abutting our frontage in Heritage Drive, and okay. therefore they have the scrutiny to allow what happens on our frontage. That's my interpretation of it. I think we're going to need a legal opinion. Yeah, yeah, that's Understand. And we are working on a legal opinion on yeah. that. But okay. at this point, you are safe to proceed since there are not any formal votes of approval. What's our earliest date for a site walk? We have we have three dates here, um, but we would we're kind of hoping to withhold one. So the tenth okay. or the twenty fourth, because we we have a special request for the seventeenth. Pushing it to the 24th, does that create any undue hardship on, on you as an applicant? I know it's a little further out, but. Um, would I be required to withhold a perspective? Sh should everything we've described resolve itself to the point of us being confident presenting a, preparing a preliminary application, would a site walk be a barrier to me submitting that to the town? Can he submit his prelim without the site walk being done first? Yes. I would say condition. since the site walk would have already been scheduled, it just may not have happened. Okay. Yes. Then no, I'm good. Okay. Yeah, let's schedule it for the 24th of August. Uh, I want to say 4:30, 5 o'clock. What, what's? You tell me. We'll be there. Does Last five work for all you gentlemen? Yeah. Five, five, p five p.m. on the 24th of August. Site walk. Is there anything you want them specifically to mark out? You can do it. If you can mark, <laughs> mark out the uh, outer demarcations of, of the subdivision and then the individual uh, frontages for each lot. So any like front front lot corners where we hit, where yeah. we hit the... Uh, and you guys haven't yeah. done soil surveys or anything yet? Or you we have. have you, you, yep. you have. We have okay. a full high intensity for the whole site. And you'll, you'll just, you'll have the drawings for us so we can see where all that's at. Yes, sir. Right. So one, one concern I have, because um, I'm a nature guy, is the vernal pool. Mm -hmm. um, I see that it crosses lots one, two, and three and has a no cut, no disturb buffer that it will be deeded to those lots. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Yes, sir. And um, I just like to make sure that gets done. Yeah, so um, just for reference for everyone else, that the darkest hatch up there near in, in the rear yard of lots one and two, um, very large, significant vernal pool. Um, we went out, we submitted species lists to, um, to the state, quite a few egg masses in there. So... Um, that's going to require a um, NERPA permit by rule for activities adjacent to a sensitive resource. Um, 
and there'll be that that heavy dash line that you see coming from it is a 250 foot uh, critical terrestrial setback so we're required to preserve 75 percent of the area contained within that perimeter um, and to do so we're going to have to deed restrict the rear yard of lots one two and a portion of three yep. so all of the uh all of the building envelope and utilities for those three will be located up front and we have test pits as you can see to, to support that happening so okay. any further questions from the board thank you for your time sir thank you thank you ladies thank you. all right next item for new business sketch plan norman court major subdivision old pine hill road r44 <laughs> lot 20 civil consultants uh, so this is a uh, no, conflict no. of interest for me, so I'm going to step away. Okay, thank you, sir. <laughs> Hi, my name is Neil Raposin with Civil Consultants. I am at Norman Court LLC. Um, what we have here for a sketch plan uh, is a it's a major site plan and conditional use. Uh, Conditional use application for uh, a multifamily development uh, on the existing uh, Norman Court uh, right of way. Um, not sure if all of you are familiar with it. Um, this this lot was part of a uh, part of a formerly uh, proposed development. It was a large residential development that had a one road entering in off of Halflinger Lane and coming around through Norman Court. Since then, uh, you know the entities uh, you know divided, and so the lots never. Uh, were never combined, uh, and this this is the result of uh, a more condensed uh, multifamily development uh, that's going to uh, keep itself all the way on the on the road side of Coffin Brook that runs through the property uh, and maintain a large open space uh, open space in the back uh, to get the density to get the uh, the 18 uh, apartment units that are proposed for this development. Uh, this section up here. Uh, was this is actually a family lot split that was split out uh, for uh, future development for a house for the family uh, that's not it's not going to be involved in any of the additional subdivision and it's going to stay in the family ownership so uh, that's all this portion here there's literally nothing going on with this application uh, so I flip this over and get a show you the plan for where the development will be so uh, the, the proposed development is going to uh, rehab all of uh, Norman Court uh, up to uh, this last lot that's currently served by it. Uh, so this is going to, to improve this to town standards right up, right up to this point here. Um, we've done quite a bit of preliminary work on this uh, to this point, even though this is just sketch. Um, we've spoken with uh, police, fire, uh, main water and uh, also Underwood uh, engineers for the for the proposed sewer because this will be going on uh, municipal sewer and water. Uh, it's going to require uh, a pump station uh, to service these uh, these three buildings uh, to get this up to a, a structure. There'll be a gravity structure that will enter Norman Court and go uh, to Old Pine Hill, and that's for the request of of Jay Wheeler and Underwood. That's what they'd prefer to see is only gravity lines entering the, the town system. Uh, so we've tried to take that into account as we as we've gone through the preliminary and making sure everything would everything would work through here. Uh, and also there's a one single family lot that's proposed uh, to be uh, to be created here and that's kind of due to the fact that it, we had we had the room available and there was um, there was an opportunity to to develop that and still maintain our maintain our densities on this side. Uh, and accommodate this with with our available parking and our uh, uh, and just the area we had between these between these two wetlands and this uh, this existing house out here. Uh, we do propose this that this the whole development will be under the threshold for the stormwater permitting of DEP. Uh, so it's under an acre of new and developed uh, redeveloped impervious area. Uh, despite that, we. Do, did want to incorporate uh, some stormwater management to make sure that the receiving waters uh, down below coming through the cul-de-sac here at uh, Halflinger uh, don't experience any increases. So we did do a full uh, stormwater study and are going to implement some uh, previous pavers at these uh, parking areas up against the units uh, to provide treatment and quantity control here. Uh, 
And that's that's it in a nutshell. Are there any questions? How, how, many, away? how many units? Uh, 18. 18. 18, uh, 18 individual units here, and then uh, the single family lot. My only concern, and I'll bring it up again, and it, it goes back to our, our staff work. I know in a previous meeting we discussed um, we're, we're putting a lot a lot on our infrastructure and our public utilities, and I know we had asked for written statements from both the water and the sewer department to uh, quantify what, what is their current capacity, uh, how is that capacity going to be affected with bringing the edge online and all the apartments that are there, uh, what is their future capacity and what's the demand signal going to be for them to request whether it's public fund or, or whatever for future expansion and where this project is going to be on public water and sewer I, I think we would be remiss in our duties as a board if we continue to approve projects that require public utilities without that information we're really putting the cart before the horse and I, I know we asked for that two months ago and we, we still have not received that as a board we did receive an invitation to go visit the facilities and I'm, I'm amenable to, to a, a facility visit but I, I think we need the people who run those facilities you, and that request probably has to come from the town manager to say this is what our capacity is and, and I think we would be remiss as a board if we did not have that information and we're continuing to approve projects on public utilities did you not see the email in regards to the water um, the rest of the board may not have anyways but uh, from Daniel uh, back on the 21st that uh, this one to you Phil okay. um, that they are working on finishing still gotta get used to eyeballs it's getting better but so um, off the top of my head I believe the existing filters are 300 gallons a minute they don't run 24 hours a day because of filter backwashes etc etc um, so basically goes on to about uh, 720,000 uh, gallons per day max capacity assuming they run 24 hours although it runs a little less than that for backwash uh, believes the current use daily is about 150,000 gallons per day with a peak of about 300,000 gallons a day and they're going to be bumping up the pretreatment capacity up some to ensure they have plenty of room for future and maybe even adding another filter many years from now when it's when it comes needed so they're not even anticipating a third filter um, I just I, what I want on. to avoid and I, and I sorry if to interrupt but you know we just had serious water conditions with our, with our public utilities last summer because we were in yep. a drought condition we're, we're adding more and more uh, infrastructure that requires a public utility and and but he gives are, he gives yeah. other numbers here okay. that says uh, he believes current daily use to be about 150 thousand gallons per day with a peak of 300 thousand, um, and so you know a single family a, a, an entire single family typically uses about 200 to 300 gallons per day. So literally, um, but so what is our current capacity, and what what does that leave us for? So the, the daily, so the uh, the max capacity is around seven hundred thousand gallons, and we're using about one hundred fifty thousand a day, with a peak of three hundred thousand so gallons that. a day. So we're about halfway. Yeah. I'm okay. Can and we get some more figures from the sewer district as well? Um, I can get see if I can get some figures from Jay. I can tell you that in my conversations with him, um, and what he's got planned. Uh, we're using, I think he said around half or a little under half because his, his, uh, uh, his, it's his baby, it's his area he does, deals with, but the sewer district was developed when prime tanning was still at, operating at max. Um, honestly, in my conversations with Jay, from what he told me is they're getting a second, they're I don't know if any of you have had the pleasure of being down there and taking the tour, but basically, picture like two oversized swimming pools. He's got one processing right now, so the septage. Um, they're working on getting a second one up online, and the reality is, is right now we would we have the capacity to process more than what our permit allows us to do. 
So he has ample capacity. The bigger issue would be permitting, but I will certainly follow up with him on that. I, I think that's just a valuable tool for us because yep. um, we'd be remiss in our duties. If we keep approving projects and, and if we have another drought incident where we can't provide water to our townspeople, uh, shame on us for not doing our, our homework. And, well, and I, need to, like. I need to schedule something with Maine Water. Um, so Jay and... So Jay is the town sewer, and I can get Jay to put something in writing, I'm sure. Uh, Joe is the main water guy that I've got to meet with. Terry and I were planning on meeting with him anyways, because as you know, we we're trying to get some information together to make a kind of a comprehensive planning board packet, so I can certainly just get on that sooner rather than later, that meeting with him and ask we're him looking, to bring I that, think that information. I a, a, a firm commitment from them. Yep. This is where we're I'll at. ask him to bring that this with him what, when we what meet. what we can do, and this yep. is what, this is going to be the time where we have to say, hey, we need some help, whether that's grant money or infrastructure. Mm -hmm. That's a very valuable tool for us, and we need, we need it. <clears throat> do we know if we have any other secondary types of water flow underneath that we can tap into if we need? Is that, I mean, we're depending on a river. Um, Solely. That information, <clears throat> I haven't dug that deep into our resources. It's been a chaotic seven, eight months. I don't even know how long I've been here. <laughs> but I can look into that, too. I know James and I did discuss that there was, uh, there there are, if I recall the, the, and I know he's listening, so if I get this wrong, oh, man, I'm in trouble. Um I believe there was studies done and there is water in Berwick. Um, I believe what the determination was made at that time was that the cost to basically get the water to where we need it to be was too high. Because all the water down where it's falling, I not up here where everybody else It's actually not there. actually an aquifer over there, believe it or not. Yeah, there is. Yeah. It's right. not, so not in that. That right. map's wrong. <laughs> I can prove it. You argue with them. <laughs> I'm staying out of that one. I got my hands full, but I'll get main water and I will get the septic to the sewer do district. Have, do we have any further questions for no. this issue? Thank you for your time, sir. So we're going to set a site sidewalk. walk for them? We sidewalk. could do that. Um, <laughs> okay, so next day. like I said, we have 10, 17, and 24. You guys already scheduled the 24th. You guys have, I feel like we did this whole damn thing backwards for them. Poor Jojo. So you're going to have to schedule on for Jojo's Cafe, which will be an easy, quick, easy one too. Um, so do you want it, to do can this we do tenth a or seventeenth? On that, can we do a two for? Or, or we can do one on the tenth and one on the seventeenth. So this one so shouldn't really shouldn't take too long because it's already on an existing road. We can stake out the, the building corners and the parking lot corners, and why don't we you do basically it on see it from 10th. the road if you want to? Do you want to do this? Let's on, do it August tenth. Do this August one August tenth. Yeah. Okay. Five p.m. work for everyone. Yes. That's for Norman Court. Norman Court. Mm -hmm. What about Joe Joyce? We're gonna we'll schedule that That's after she presents. They've had to sit through all of this, oh, and it's the you quickest for your patience. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for your time, Thank sir. We'll see all right, you on the Neil. Sidewalk. Um, so they're gonna, you're gonna anything in particular you want them to stake out? Uh, just the lots, and did you dig test pits? There haven't been any test pits uh, beyond the the previous test pits that were done for the for the other development. Those will be on the map from. Yep. I assume. Okay. Yep. Yeah, I think that's it. Just the lots on the on the frontage. Okay. That's five o'clock as well. Yes. Thank you, John. Thank you, guys. Thank you. All right. Uh, next item for new business: conditional use JoJo Cafe, five thirteen Portland Street, R seventy two lot five RCI zone. Thank you for your patience. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mean to make anybody feel bad. <laughs> hey, guys. Um, Aaron Barth, 513 Portland Street, uh, also 3101 Worth Street. Um, first, I want to thank you guys uh, for your volunteering. Uh, tremendous hard work here uh, to try and uh, improve the town. It's crazy. Um, you know, what just seeing tonight, uh, all of the new things that are, are coming on board. Um, so... You know, with that being said, uh, we see a tremendous uh, uh, advantage for us uh, to uh, open up a, a new cafe uh, to offer to the town. Um, so what it is is, is going to be a, a breakfast cafe, uh, breakfast pizza cafe. 
um, serving uh, cappuccinos, espressos, uh, different uh, uh, cold foods, and uh, and uh, individual uh, breakfast pizzas. Very simple, um, small, elegant. Um, it's probably the simplest thing tonight you'll you'll uh, face. Mm. Uh, you have me at food. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. Coffee. We're talking pizza. coffee and food. I, I, I think Maybe it's we a, saved the best for last. It's a winner. No objections <laughs> here. <laughs> um, no, we're not open yet. I mean, we've been waiting for this moment. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry? Where is 513? 513, uh, the, the other uh, landmark would be Trican. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I think this would be a good time so to clarify this is, that uh, this will be um, edible food, but not edibles. Right. Food. So, tri, so tri can is on the corner of Old Route Four and it's a great Route way Four. To put it. Micro. Right. Correct. Right. So this is in that building um, adjacent to that space. Uh, there will okay. be uh, complete the other half of that building. Not the other half, uh, actually. Kind of uh, the middle. It got the uh, tri can got subdivided. Uh, the space we divided the space in half because look the cannabis business has changed uh, dramatically in this uh, uh, environment in Berwick talking about uh, planning um, you know things definitely changed and uh, so we want to utilize the space as effectively as we can so we took uh, some unused space and we want to turn it into something positive uh, for the town at least uh, right. and not necessarily have that perception of it being a, a, a weed uh, edible uh, cafe. Well, it's brilliant in simplicity. You get them high and then they come over and eat. I guess. <laughs> you, you, caught, you caught me. Yeah. That's, that's why I wanted to clarify. Non, it's, the food will be edible. No, I, I mean, look, you know, we, we want to focus on sustainability uh, and um, being able to offer uh, stuff from local uh, local farmers, local produce. We want to keep it local. Um, it, it's really important to us. And maybe introduce some uh, different types of food. What, what from my you, beautiful what wife here. Proposing for hours. Um, you know, I was sitting here thinking about that as well because um, you know typically uh, we had proposed uh, seven to seven. However. Um, Look, we also know that uh, a couple of places uh, local to us open at 5 a.m. Um, so we would want the ability, if we chose to open at 5, which um, I don't personally want to, um, <laughs> but uh, if, if it is uh, an option to be able to open uh, that space uh, that early. We have a lot of early commuters. Um, going to the shipyard and you know we have a lot of people who pass us um, at that time uh, that would be looking for uh, that type of uh, stop so I would say and, and we don't know necessarily how things are going to progress with this cafe mm -hmm. um, initially my wife and I were talking seven to two um, it may transition into a late afternoon you know lunch who knows uh so i want the ability i want that flexibility uh from the town to be able to say okay you can be open from five to whatever possibly nine i, I wouldn't go later than nine uh you know looking at other uh, restaurants uh, in the area bubba's and i don't know uh, any other places that were really matching uh there really aren't that many places in berwick <laughs> I, th I think we really could use some you know yeah, a, a nice cafe yeah. Yeah. this is a sit town. down it, it, it's a counter you know order at the counter sit down relax we're talking about eight 13 uh 13 seats uh two four tops or not, not uh, four two four um uh, seated tables two tables four per uh table and then five or six uh, bar stools. So, um, I, I, I would, I, I will uh, probably apply for a liquor license uh, because it's something that 
you know, look, who doesn't want a mimosa or a uh, Bloody Mary in the morning on, on the weekend, possibly? Uh, Just a question. Since you know there's that little drive through right next there, right? Do you I think do. that will impact me? Look, um, I'll address that. I've never been Because there. I have a cannabis shop as well, and we have five cannabis shops on our street. I think what? one other coffee shop. It's not going to impact us. Uh, it's a completely different um, experience. It's more of a get out of your car, come in, order, sit down, open your laptop, uh, enjoy a nice uh, cappuccino. Or and I, and I think that's that's the area that we want that type of right, traction. You yeah. know, I mean that section of Route Four is. Uh, I think right for that, you know, like you say, we have the green mile there already. So, you know, why not adding some more? Yeah, uh, and, and, and look, no joking aside, I do believe that it will uh, it will assist with our other business as well. Um, you know, there are we need something uh, different on that street. Uh, it's it's kind of absurd right now. Uh, it's, so, we we want to see a little bit of a change. You open tomorrow. <laughs> so, that stamp. So we're looking to schedule. A <laughs> so the the reason I was hoping you would keep the seventeenth open is that is our next. Um, we were hoping we'd be able to do, yeah, seventeenth. We we're hoping that's the next meeting that we would have time to um, notice people prior to, Good. and because this is a fairly simple. Yeah. Uh, compared, but, comparatively speaking. So five um, five p.m. Yeah. Does that work for everyone on the seventeenth? Uh, we do okay? currently uh, operate um, our kitchens. Uh, I've already gotten approval from the state that we're able to cohabitate. Um, we have two kitchens that uh, that we have uh, one downstairs for the dispensary and then one upstairs, uh, and that's the one that we'll be using um, for any type of baking or anything but we also right behind the counter we'll have uh, cooking and stuff like that so we're already uh, we just have a couple of small details that we have to address and, and uh, simple and there's no state uh, regulation or law that precludes a business from uh, commingling a this type of business with a marijuana business next door is there anything that would preclude us from being able to approve that well, you know the fire chief and I have already walked through um, as like a courtesy. Mm -hmm. uh, the only thing that would preclude it would be a daycare. Yeah. Okay. You know that that those type of uh, establishments. Like adult daycare that I want to go to. <laughs> yes. Adult daycare. Yes. That's. Uh, I wonder. Adult it's, daycare. Yeah. It's going. We'll to take be care of you guys. Completely separated <laughs> too. Okay. So. Okay. I have once I can get to it. The only question that I had um, sure. was related to. Parking. Um, yeah. So we have, um, I think we have 27 uh, marked spots um, the entire in the entire, well, just on the top deck. Um, we right. do have parking in the rear. We have an additional um, eight spots in the rear uh, that employees uh, will be utilizing. Uh, we have some tenants that are going to be moving out. Uh, very soon and uh, so if we need that additional parking we can pick that up um, look like I said before businesses decrease significantly uh, with uh, Tricam um, and uh, you know we have that what's nice is having those two entrances on the property we don't have that one entrance similar to kind farms that really creates this bottleneck um, and, 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 and dangerous aspect. However, we did have a death last year uh, right there uh, in front of our building, um, which was unfortunate. But it had nothing to do with our uh, our entrances. Um, so, yeah, I, mean, I, I think I think the parking is. I mean, I, I'm very familiar with that building. I actually used to rent office space in there years yeah. ago, and uh, I think there's you know for a cafe this size, there's plenty, plenty of parking. But, yeah. you know, we'll get into that with the... With One additional the, thing that I might uh, request is approval possibly for outdoor seating. Um, you know, on the on the, um, on the the back side of the upper front parking lot, 
I wouldn't mind cutting out uh, some of the pavement and uh, you know adding in some outdoor seating uh, seasonally. The back side of what? Uh, you know the, fr <laughs> the the front of the building at the front of the building to the towards the back um, by the uh, power power station. You're on a corner lot. The front of the building being where I came in. Yes, the entrance <laughs> okay. of the building. Yes. Take a front. All right. Thank you. It's a side front. The side front. Okay. So we do have a site walk scheduled for the 17th. We'll do the 17th yes. at 5 p.m. Okay. That work for you guys, Aaron, Irina? 17th. Yes. 17th. Any questions for the applicant? So if we want to, the board can find the application complete at this point. Um, okay. The only outstanding thing I had was the parking, which we just satisfied. The board can find the application complete and also schedule a public hearing for the 17th as well if that's the planning board meeting mm -hmm. then yes i would make a motion that we find the application complete i'll second that all in favor thank you sir thank you thank guys no i appreciate you guys though. yeah and i'll thank you for sitting through all the other uh, issues <laughs> <laughs> Can you can you talk in the microphone, ma'am? I'm sorry, because oh, yeah. the, the people at home can't hear you. Eating a bar, so I would like to bring to this small, little, unique town something special and different experience, and we will provide the best cappuccino in town. Yeah. I okay. guarantee. I like it. Uh, yes, we promise. Uh, no, it's refreshing. So, <laughs> I had a year of training. Uh, so. It, it's refreshing to have th this type of a business come before the board because you know it, it kind of gets how much marijuana and solar do we see and and now some right. different so yeah. thank you for that and it, it and, is it's and, refreshing. And clearly, system. there's a tremendous amount of uh, infrastructure and developments and uh, people that are going to be coming into town. Um, so you, know, you mentioned possibly two uh, different kind of food. What kind of food are you? Russian. Russian. Yeah. No, it's not just Russian. It will be bakery as well, like croissants yeah. mm. and mm. salads, yeah, cold salads. salads. Yeah. yeah. You had me a cappuccino, but <laughs> Russian is great too. Uh, be careful, Les. He keeps promising that I will absolutely love the cappuccino, and yet I have yet to see one made over there. And it doesn't hurt any animals. <laughs> it doesn't hurt any. We're all good. That, wait, are there any turtles? <laughs> we, we, actually, we actually considered the straws for the turtles. There you, go. <laughs> there you go. Did you just ask him if they were having turtle soup? Or? Turtle soup. Oh, you have good luck with Karen tonight. Yeah. You have good luck. She's on an airplane. She's on a plane. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much, right. Have a nice Thank, Thank you, you guys. So we'll see right. you at the uh, Second public comment. <laughs> I see no one here for public comment. Thank you. Yeah, you cut it close, guys. Any informational items? Hannah? Irish? I got two brain cells tonight. Okay. I don't think I... You've don't. already used both of them, so... I have to so. shake my head until they bash off each other so and make a... blew through a our mandatory 8.30 close. We did. It was 8.30? It's 9 o'clock. I thought it was 9. Yeah. It is so 9. It is 9. Yeah, but 8.30. Oh, but listen, oh, you guys. Had one that like, so almost eleven one night. And a half hour said, off the next we're meeting. We're going to put a limit of eight thirty on. Got you it. cut it close. Because nine o'clock is my bedtime. <laughs> That's so the closest you guys have got. All right, do time. we want to adjourn? If there are no further items for consideration from the esteemed Burgess meeting room in the depths of the Berwick Town Hall, I would like to make a motion that we adjourn. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. That Thank better you, be unanimous. For your <laughs> support and patience. Just for the record, I did call.